Get up here, man. Chop this game up, man. Y'all already know what it is, man. Hold on. Let me do this right quick. Let me set this up. Ha! <laughs> Another beautiful time to fellowship. Chop up this game. Sit up there, you understand me, and speak on certain things I didn't have the opportunity to speak on. But now I have the liberty and the opportunity to speak on it now. And I'm appreciative um, for having this opportunity. Hold on, let me do this. Set this up. She said, finally, my bad, baby. Yeah, my, my bad. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Give me one minute. Get this right. How y'all feeling today? Come on, y'all know y'all supposed to greet one another. We don't know what tomorrow may hold. You better give thanks. You better say hey. Rowdy, what's going on with it? Hold on. Still doing this punchy. There we go. Oh, you already know this live was brought to you by the game. <laughs> and, you know, and Fiji water. Yeah. Hold on, let me do this. Now I can see the comments. Good. Sometime this screen, as y'all keep going, it'll stop. So I got to do it like this. Ray Gunn, appreciate that respect, man. Appreciate the two. Good looking famo. Blessings, man. Um, oh, you already know. Choose and fees. Tony Davis, man. What's going on, brother? Get up in here, man. Let's chop it up. Aaron, what's happening with it, man? I already spoke to Snazzy Girl. Hey, Monique. Hey, baby. Miss Holloway. What's going on? Miss West. What's going on? Aunt, what's going on? You know what I mean? Mr. Joe Blast, what's going on? David, what's going on? Ray, what's happening with it? I see Miss Mia Sky fine ass up in here. Robin, hey, where this man at? Uh, I had to straighten out some things. As the Migo said, just a little bit of straightening. Ain't nothing but just a little bit of straightening. That's all it was. It's just a little bit of straightening. You know, sin, you know, sin don't like being lied on that. If it come from abroad, you know, it ain't really worth coming down. But certain subjects, when certain goofies try to lie on you, you know, if you have the opportunity to clear it up, then, you know, that's what I did. I had to sit up there, you know what I mean, and bless something, you know, for two seconds. But we hitting that, man. Get them likes all the way up. And if you don't mind, could you please get you some water? Could you, could you please get you some fruit right now? You'll be able to digest this game just a little bit better. Y'all missed the beautiful chopping. Oh, you was there. <laughs> Ain't it just amazing how I just go from chopping and then just come right here? <laughs> oh, my God. If you don't love me, I love me for me, man. Hold on. One more, one more. Okay, okay. I feel renewed. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to teach now. I'm ready to talk. Denise, hey, baby. See everybody up in here, man. You know, it take me a while to even sit up there and get to it because I got to acknowledge, you know what I mean, the fam bam. Hold on, hold on. Everybody right now, take out the time to tell God thank you for blessing Sepulba the Prince, man, to see another year. Before we speak on any of these squares, any of these topics, man, I want everybody right now to say happy birthday to Sepulba the Prince. Right now, right now, 
Everybody take out the time right now to just say happy birthday, you know what I mean, Sepulveda the Prince. You know? Yeah, I see. Uh, hold on. Mr. Uh, LR. Yeah, LRPs, man. Yeah, blessings to you, P. Made the pimping a mod. Damn, y'all must think that I'm about to say something about y'all favorite celebrity, man. Uh, my bad. Maybe, maybe I should pick another topic, man. They coming in here with the, the twos and fuse, man. You know, they, <laughs> you know I, uh, I can already expect that, man, somebody done already got the word out, man. I think he going to say something about, I think he going to say something about this. Or he might say, you know, damn, my bad. Appreciate that, man. Good looking. <laughs> you, they must know. Listen. Somebody had made a statement. They said, see him talk about everybody, man. You know what I mean? He might a little bit talk about Chicago, but he don't like to go hard. You know, like he go hard on everybody else. He be spam, you know, people that come from the Chicago. And in a way, I can't front. I love my city so much that if you notice, I don't like to go back and forth with people from the city. And I don't really like to even speak any type of evil or negative on anybody from this city. You know what I'm saying? Because I just love Chicago, man. I really do. And we hate each other so much. We kill each other so much. You know what I mean? I don't want to add to that. You know? But at the same time, you know, um, I think that there needs to be a balance. So we're going to definitely have to bring a balance and I'm going to tell you some things. So yeah, we, we'll get to Kanye. <clears throat> we'll get to Kanye, but yeah, brother, definitely, man. Appreciate that. Uh, too. the player of all nations, man. You know the man coming over here, man. Crystal Gazer gang. Hold on. Gang over here. One sip at a time. You dig. Appreciate that fam. Um, you know, but if I say anything that's contrary to, what you want to hear or something that's, you know, against your views. I hope that you don't get discouraged to the point where, you know, you want to, yeah, man, just, I don't want to fuck with seeing no more, man. He said, what, what happened? He said something, you know what happened last time when I said something about y'all favorite rapper? You know, I know that a lot of you, you know, you get in a lot of you guys, you get into your feelings, man, about your favorite rapper. So I know it's a very uh, sensitive subject. You know, if you say something about somebody's favorite rapper or a singer, it's almost like little kids, you know, when they love wrestlers and things like that. So if you say they favorite rapper ain't a gangster, if you say they favorite rapper ain't a pimp, you know, niggas were willing to kill you, man, beat you up over things like that. They attached to these songs. Hold on. Extended clips. Yeah, I like that, man. Everybody giving shout out to Sepulveda the Prince. But without further ado, now that I'm a, oh, and let me say this, man. Y'all, everybody been getting at me. I really don't have a desire to do it. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't. But you guys have texted me, text my phone, got in my DM, in the comment sections on Patreon that you want to review on Sharp and Kelby on No Jumper. Now, honestly, I'm just being sincere with you. I can't fake the funk with y'all. I really don't desire to do it. I don't. But if that's something that y'all pushing for, then, yeah, you're going to have to, if I do a live on that, yeah, man, you know, like, uh, uh, in the strip club, yeah, you're going to have to send it, man. You're going to have to, you're going to have to send it. Because I really don't have a desire to, uh, to touch on that. I really don't. You know, to each his own, though. But I, I really don't. But if that's something that you desire and you want me to speak on it and things like that, I'm going to give you my honest opinion. And a lot of you probably would be uh, a little surprised by a lot of things that, you know, I seen and the way that I see things. Because my, my views might not be in agreement in agreement with the public opinion. Or even most of the people that's in the game, you know, 
for that matter. So again, you know, uh, be careful what you desire. You know, and y'all and y'all already trying to put me in the hater box, seeing a hater, seeing a hater, man, seeing just be hating. So so why you ask me? If if you think that I'm a hater, if I say something contrary to what you think. And now all of a sudden, if you know I'm going to say, say something different and you might not feel what I'm saying, then, then why ask me? Why even tune in? You know what I mean? It's a shame I got I to gotta say something to be in agreement with everybody. I don't think like y'all. You know, so again, man, um, if that's something that y'all just really want, I give it to you. But honestly, between you and I, 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 I really don't care. I did what I did with Dre because I was just honoring Dre. I was honoring the pimpin. You know, it's not every day that you're going to see an interview with Dre on a big platform such as that. And that's why it had to be done. Because I know the cloth, you know, that Dre come from. And I know the questions that you're supposed to ask so you can find out you know what I mean about them, the, the, them Renaissance men that he be speaking of that you're never going to hear about in a pimp DVD or film and things like that. You're going to have to get around individuals like Dre who had a father or somebody that had a cousin or uncle, somebody that go back to that older generation that can lace you about that time and that frame of mind that those individuals that was participating in the lifestyle at that time had. You know, so again, I just let that go. Um, you thought Kelby was gonna get up and and get and get beat on. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone, man. I'm I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave that alone, man. You know, but again, let me just uh, yeah, let me let me leave that alone. Uh. But yeah, man, you know, uh, let me just start off with your boy, YK uh, Cyrus. Now, I can't lie to you. I'm going to give you my first thought because I, I can't sit up there and fake anything. When I seen your boy just uh, in the car, you know, on some emotional shit, you have to understand I'm an 84 baby. I'm, I'm born in 1984. I'm raised in the city of Chicago. My generation is different. So... The type of men that I came up around, it was very unmanly, you know, for a guy to just be having his heart all on his sleeves and, oh, man, you know, <laughs> what's wrong, Sam? Freeze don't want to fuck with me no more, man. <laughs> what? Freeze don't want Yeah, man, he don't want to fuck with me, man. What's, what's, what? What, what, why else you cry? Yeah, man, Freeze don't pick up the phone no more, man. Dre don't pick up the phone. Don't nobody fuck with me, man. <laughs> P, man, you get yourself together. You supposed to be some pimping, man. I know, man, but man, they don't want to campaign with me no more. Niggas don't pick up the phone, man. I'm tired of this shit. What I do? Why, why, why the pimps? Why my niggas ain't picking up the phone no more? Lord Jesus, help me. Like... You might not say it, but in your mind, you're going to be like, damn, what's wrong with this bitch-ass nigga? <laughs> you're going to think to yourself, like, man, what is wrong with this goofy? You know what I mean? Crying like this. Man, get yourself together, man. What's wrong with this nigga? Sitting over there crying and shit. Oh, hell no. This nigga soft as hell. I come from that generation. We would have never took it because you got to just think about it. You're taking a phone. You're speaking to a phone. And then you're pouring out your emotions to a world of individuals who don't give a fuck. This is what I be meaning by all that light skin shit. Oh, Mr. LRPs, man. I wish you didn't. I wish you didn't. And you know what I mean by that. But blessings to you, loved one. But I wish you I wish you didn't. But, you know, I ain't going to put the biz out like that. But, man, I appreciate the respect. You know what I mean? Respect to you, P. Love. Um, but, yeah, man, you know, just keeping that thing, 
you know, all the way, you know what I mean, uh, 100, man, you know, uh, my generation would have looked at me crazy. But see him doing? He taking the phone and he crying about niggas not picking up the phone for him. Niggas not fucking with him no more. You know, it just, like I said, my generation looked down upon that. This generation is very soft. It's become too, uh, it's become too basically common for guys to just expose, you know, too much weakness, you know, to a, 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 a population of people who don't give a damn. What is the point of that? These people don't care. It's just like when people be crying. Now, I don't mean to be heartless. But let's say if somebody died or got killed in my family, uh, sometimes you can't help it. You'll be talking and then it'll just hit you out of nowhere. I'm not talking about stuff like that. I'm talking about people who actually go live and they're already crying already. They came in crying. They be on some Hassan Campbell shit. They fix the phone just so you can see them crying. That's some gay ass shit. It's no way to get around it. I seen that shit, by the way. I started to react. I said, man, I ain't even gonna react to this. This shit's so gay. I said, this bitch ass nigga fixed the phone. He adjusted the phone. He put the phone in the right position just so you can see him cry. I said, what do, what, what, what do we come from? You know, what generation is this? That niggas is actually sitting over there, you know, uh, hold on. Yeah, I, I, I call him back later. You know what I mean? What generation, you know what I mean, is this where niggas is in their 40s? You're in your 40s. You're a grandfather. And you're adjusting the phone. You, 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 you positioned it so people can perfectly see the tears that is proceeding from your eyes. Like, what is wrong with niggas? I can see like, you know, if you was uh, saved, you living for God and you're so spiritual, you got a revelation or something, God dealing with you and you cry tears of joy or something like that, you know, for spiritual reasons or something like, but, but I just don't understand somebody saying that they got three, four bodies and then they take the phone and, and they, they want you to see them crying. I'm like, this nigga is the goat of YouTube. This is the perfect YouTuber. <laughs> I keep telling y'all, that's some that's man. But like I said, my generation, my population of people appreciate the fact, appreciate the respect. We just different. The niggas that the niggas that I come around, you know what I mean? Uh I remember, matter of fact, I'll give you one example. I wasn't even thinking about this, but my mind go back. My mind go back to the time when my ear was fucking with me. I had to be every bit, I want to say, of like 10 years old. Wasn't even 11. And uh, my ear was hurting, man. My ear was fucking with me. And I told my mom, and you know, mom, anybody knew my mother, man, my mother was very sensitive about me. Anything, anything that hurt me, psh, huh, mama on it. Now, my stepfather, you know, Dennis, Heartless ass nigga, but that's what I needed though. I didn't know it at the time, but um, make a long story short, you know, mama stood up there, man. I said, mom, my ear hurt. Oh. <laughs> she said, your ear hurt, but yeah, mom. <laughs> and, and then it's like, boy, carry your ass to bed. Boy, you sitting over there crying and stuff like that, man. Get out. I thought you said you was a gangster. I thought you said you tough, man. You sitting up here crying about your ear hurting. And mom like, man, mama like, stop. Stop talking to him like that. You know, baby, come on. Put your clothes on, baby. Let's go to the hospital. I'm like, mom, my ear hurt, mom. It just hurts. It just hurts. He, he's, he like, boy, what I tell you about all that light skin shit? Boy, you doing all that goddamn crying and shit over your ear hurting, boy. You know what I mean? Come on, man. I thought you said, man, tough that shit out. Man, it's too late to be uh, going to the hospital and stuff. I was like, mom, but it, it hurts. She's like, it hurts. I got to take them. You know how mamas be. 
<laughs> you know how mamas be like, shut up, I'm taking my baby. So look, mama take me to the hospital. While we uh, finding out about my ear, I did have a little ear infection. But while we, while we uh, in the hospital and everything, why somebody tried to break in mom's car? They sit up there and try, well, you know, some of y'all too young to remember, but you know, people that's uh, in my age group, you know, motherfuckers used to put the club around the steering wheel. And motherfuckers had sit up there, you understand me, and, and <laughs> hit the kick, had, kick the glass all in, all type of shit, but couldn't get the club off. Couldn't get the club off, you know what I mean? And man, couldn't steal nothing. And so, man, motherfucker just, you know what I mean, sit up there and broke the window. Yeah, bro, divine, had the club on it. You know, I took it back, man. You know? So look, um, we get back to the house. You know what I mean? Mama sit up there and was like, yeah, you know, um, you know, while we was there, somebody tried to woo woo. Then it's like, oh man, I told you. So he wait till mama go to work. He was like, Yo, crying ass, sitting over there talking about some your ear hurt. You know what I mean? Got the window all busted. Somebody tried to steal the car. See, that was God telling your ass to stay here. You gonna wait till it's late at night to go to the hospital and shit. You know what I mean? Man, you gotta decide, man. You gonna be a man or not? You know, that's that just how the, uh, that older generation back then. Are you a man? I'm like, yeah, I'm a man. He like, how you a man? And you telling your mama that your ear hurt. I'm like, but my ear did hurt. He's like, man, suck that shit up, man. You got the window all busted and shit. Now we got to get the window fixed and shit all because your damn ear hurt and shit, man. You know what I mean? You supposed to be a gangster. You supposed to be tough, man. You ain't supposed to be crying like that. What's wrong with you? So, again, you know what I mean? Yeah, he asked the 10-year-old. That was just Dennis, man. You know what I mean? Love him still to this day. But that was just Dennis, man. Are you a man? Yeah, I'm a man. <laughs> You know, so listen, man, um, we sat up there, you understand me, and actually left, uh, of course, that area and everything like that. But long story short, man, you know, I'm just telling you that the men in that area, it wasn't just Dennis. It was just men in that era and men in that area. No, man, this was the era of the tough guy. You guys know what I'm talking about. That's everything in the 90s, man. You know, it was about being tough, being gangster, being, you know, it, it, you just, all of this crying shit and this sensitivity, no. No. And, you know, I know he supposed to be an R&B singer, but sometimes he be talking tough and greasy. I just, I was like, Lord, get somebody around him to lace his boots. I just want to use him to tell you guys, hey, somebody need to hear this. Hey, don't nobody give a fuck. I know this sound very heartless of what I'm saying, but don't nobody give a fuck about you. I know that sound real heartless, right? You like, what the fuck? No, don't nobody give a fuck about you. Not the way you think. It's sad that some of y'all gonna have to lose a loved one or go to jail or go through a bad circumstance to find out that people really don't fuck with you like that. And see, once you come to that realization you look more of a plum fool taking a phone and telling a world of individuals that don't give a fuck about you. That's really just making comments in the comment section for attention. That's really going live or, you know, just saying things, you know, basically. Now, you let me clear that up. It is a few people that genuinely care. A few. You'll find a few. You know, you got some godly people out there. You got some people that are sincere. But for the most part, no. No, you have more unrighteous than righteous. You have more individuals that's trying to become Instagram famous than individuals that's actually, you know, uh, sincere about your situation. You have different celebrities that will use a situation like that only to speak on it to appear to be a good guy that's helping out Lil YK. That's it. That's it. Oh, man, cheer up, man. You know, the... You know, you have some that's saying it because they're sincere. And then you have some that's just saying it 
So women can be like, oh my God, I like that. He's encouraging. Oh my God, this, he was so suicidal. But you said an encouraging word. Okay, let me follow you. Ooh, you handsome. Ooh, you sexy. Okay, let me hop up in your DM and give you some pussy, man. You you know, I like the way you quoted that scripture. Or I like the way you said that meaningful, powerful statement and shit. Let me jump my ass in your, your DM and give your powerful ass some of this pussy. That's the... <laughs> <laughs> That's what some of these niggas, the only reason why they be saying certain things. It's not genuine. It's not authentic. Motherfuckers just be sitting over there saying shit. Uh, uh, yeah, man, cheer up, man. Be cool. Woo, 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 woo. You know, that's, and it's sad, but like I said, you know, it's just not authentic. People are only saying things in the comment section now to get likes on a comment within a shade room comment section or a, a, a DJ Academics uh, comment uh, section. That's it. But it's not genuine, though. Do me a favor. Get my likes up. Make the likes, you know, look like the viewers. If we got over 900 people in here, I don't understand why we only got 455 likes. Make the likes look like the viewers. Sin don't ask for no money. You know, you, you know that's, that's on you whether you want to give or not or you know, that's on you. But one thing I do want you to do is click on that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, click on that subscribe and click on that bell button. You know, matter of fact, yeah, if you don't fuck with the content like that, because we be talking about pimping and hoeing and we be talking about a lot of shit over here that you might not agree with. So if you don't like that, then no, don't don't subscribe to the channel. We I don't need no goofies subscribing. But if you're cool, if you got a open mind, you might not, you know, be uh, a participant of the lifestyle or even inter interested, you know, as far as that's concerned, you know, but you like when I speak on other things, yeah, just come over, you know, but I'd be just seeing different comments by different individuals. I'm like, damn, where does Goofy come from? But right. No Goofies, man. Good looking, Keith. Yeah, no Goofies. But what I will say is this one sister on my Patreon, I'm trying to remember her name. Uh, and that's why I say it's a blessing uh, to have women. I know you're hearing these YouTubers, you know, saying a lot of uh, derogatory things about black women this and black women ain't this and black women ain't that. But the black woman is such a blessing, right? Because especially for guys like me that come from an era like that, that come from guys like that and evolved into pretty much being the same thing. And some might even say worse. Um, but... You know, the woman, she bring that balance. A woman bring that balance. A woman might, you know, while I'm sitting over there like, man, why this nigga crying, man? All this old bitch ass shit. This nigga, man. A woman will say, but, you know, you might not know what he, he's been through. Something might have happened in his childhood. He might not have had the opportunity to be around men that was actually exemplifying what a man is. He don't have a point of reference. He never had any represent, good representation of what a man is. So, you know, uh, he's hurting from a place of ignorance. You know, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of things that he can be hurting from. You know, so that's why I say the woman, especially the black woman, she gonna always be a blessing because, of course, if you a nigga, if you a '80s baby, a '70s baby, you know I expect you to be a certain. You niggas be harder than hard, you know. Niggas be harder than hard from different, but you know it take a woman to say, you know, but sin, you know, he might not have had a father, or he might not have had different individuals to, you know, uh, really lace him on what being a man and, you know, or really give him game on how heartless, you know what I mean, people are in this world and really don't care about how he feels and that he might not even know that. So I'm trying to remember this sister's name, but after she even said that, she went to even genuinely pray for the boy. And so when she did that, I said, you know what? You see, that's what I mean by that. You And you guys know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? You'll just be all worked up and then God will use a woman to say certain things and, and come in the spirit of femininity and sensitivity and wisdom. And you'll be like, you know what? All right, I, you know, all right, I'm, I'm doing too. All right, all right. All right. You know, 
And just like when my stepfather just want to uh, whoop, whoop your ass or your father want to whoop your ass and mama say something, daddy be like, boy, you lucky, your mom. All right, all right. <laughs> so I, when I began to hear that, then she prayed for him and things like that. I said, you know what? She's right. He might didn't have. He might was raised by all women. He might be a, a, a guy that was raised around all women that got nothing but sisters. They came up around mama, grandmama, and aunties and, and things like that. You know, and when a situation happens that he doesn't like or he doesn't agree with, he emotionally reacts instead of mentally responds to it. So, yeah, you know, but what I will say to that is blessings to that young man. I hope that he never does that again, you know, or never make a statement because that was the statement that kind of like triggered everybody. You know, I just don't want to. It was something he said to in regards of. You know, he just tired of being here. It sounded real suicidal. And see, men from my generation, we'd be like, oh, man, this sucker-ass nigga just saying shit for attention, man. Just like I told you, one of my niggas, you know what I mean, from my era, had uh, jumped on Facebook. And he had sit up there and start talking about, man, mental health is real. And woo -woo. You know, and I know some of y'all going to be like, oh, see, you wrong for that. But if you in my clique, if you if you a part of my fam, my niggas, man, you hop on the phone or you come see a nigga, you come around motherfuckers to, you know, get pulled up to get encouraged, man. But we don't be going on Facebook. We don't go on social media and put our feelings and shit out there. What I tell you, leaders lead beyond pain. If you, not, if, you, if you can't lead beyond pain, then you're not capable. You're not fit to be no leader. And we've we been taught that. And shout out, you know what I mean, again, man, you know, uh, I just hear Dre's loud as day, you know, repeating the teachings of the incomparable male Taylor. You got to be a man first and that, in any lifestyle. And just as a man that's not the manly thing to do is just to get on a Carl Thomas rant and just get emotional and convey my feelings all on social media. No. So if any of my niggas get on social media, yeah, man, you know, I'm just tired of this, man. I don't want to be here. I don't want to, I don't want I can't do it no more. Like, <laughs> if I see any of my niggas making suicidal, goofy, meaningless comments like that, on fa instantly I'm just going to keep it real. I don't want to be cool with you because you're showing me you're too soft. You're showing me that you're not fit to lead. You know what I mean? You, you're showing me that you're selfish. Anybody that commits suicide is selfish. I know some of y'all might not agree, but that is a very selfish thing to do. You only thinking about you. You're not thinking about your children. That shit that Ray J was talking about, talking about, man, you know what I mean? I, I don't want to be here. And woo, woo, woo. We don't even play like that, fam. And I know everybody was looking at WAC 100 like, oh, man, WAC always go. But I'm just keeping it real. I expect men from his era to think like that. Because that's what niggas that know me would have said. If I said some weird shit like that, do it, nigga. Go ahead and do it then, nigga. If you want to sit up there and throw everything that you got going on and how you've been a blessing, if you want to throw your whole legacy away and just kill yourself, go ahead and do it then. Do, do that bitch ass shit then. You know, that's how niggas going to <laughs> niggas gonna get at me like, nigga, nigga didn't do it then, nigga. Sitting over there crying all on the net. I don't want to be here. Because we in a generation now where this is generation victim. Everybody uh, is a victim. Everybody been victimized. Everybody crying. Everybody is a woe is me ass nigga. You know, uh, you can even get rich today making a lot of melancholy, suicidal, why my life is like this, Lord, why you bring me into this world type of music. Like if you make that type of music, Lord, I don't want to be here. I just took 30 pills this morning. I was hoping to uh, not wake up. And you know, that type of shit. If you make that type of music, you're going to have black kids, white kids, people from around the world 
just supporting you for being suicidal. I can go to the studio right now and make 15 suicide tracks and just get it and start getting high on drugs and shit and just uh, grow dreads and, and make it different colors, purple, green, and pink and get me a tongue ring and get five different piercings on my ear and sing about how I want to kill myself and I bet I go diamond. I bet I go diamond. I bet I go diamond. You know what I mean? Be like, man, this shit hard as hell, man. I didn't know sin can come like this. I wasn't even thinking about it, but damn, I feel like going. And then you have people say that in the comment section. Sin, I want to go with you. If you don't want to be here, I don't want to be here either, bro. Let's just go together. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. God made a mistake. Why the fuck am I here? <laughs> and they like, oh my God, this shit go hard. This just then, Sinful the P's new diamond hit single, I don't want to be here. Why the fuck am I here? God does make mistakes. Why am I still here? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not into that type of music. I'm not. You know, seeing be listening to ballers. I like fly shit. I like niggas talking about getting rich. Niggas having money. Shout out to that nigga Peasy. I've been having that two million up on repeat. You know what I mean? For a, mil uh, for a minute now. You know what I mean? I don't like listening to suicide music and thinking about killing myself. And sh I don't want to be here. Like, I don't, I'm not into that. I am not into that. But to each his own, man. All right, man, moving on, moving on, moving on. Tell somebody to say moving on, moving on. Um, yeah, let's deal with Draymond. First of all, before we even get to this, this don't have nothing to do with nothing. But Draymond look a damn fool. You know, Draymond look a... I just had to say that. I know you're like, man, we ain't got nothing to do. But Draymond look a goddamn fool. I looked at my thumbnail and was like, damn, all these ugly motherfuckers. This nigga ugly as hell. But he rich, though, and he just got married. He doing his thing. He having money. But I just had to say that. Remember when Wayne was like, you know, this ain't had nothing to do with nothing. I just had to, you know what I mean? Yeah, I just had to say that. I just had to get that out the way. I was like, damn, this nigga ugly as hell. You know what I mean? Thank God for money, though, man. Shout out to my nigga Yam. Um, but okay, what did I tell you guys? Whatever you do in life, take this game with you. Seeing I'm going to the NBA, take this game with you. Seeing I'm going to the WNBA, take this game with you. Take this game with you. Seeing I'm about to give my life to God, take this game with you. Seeing I'm about to get married, take this game with you. Anything you do in life, take this game with you. What am I saying? Mentally respond and not emotionally react. You can fuck up. Like, I'm really not trying to make this into no five-hour message, but just on this Draymond situation, I can make this a five-hour video alone. It's so many what-ifs that could have happened with this. Do you not understand? It's so many what-ifs that could have happened in this situation, putting his hand on Jordan Poole. First of all, Jordan not even built like that. That's all I want to say. You know, I, uh, and, and, and listen, I'm not sticking up even for uh, the Kelpie dude. But let me just say this. He's not built like that. I'm going to leave that alone. You know, but I'm seeing different individuals try to make themselves appear to be tough. Appear to be gangster appear to be, yeah, don't nobody want to fuck with me. I'm a real nigga, you know, but they doing it with people that's not about that. We have so many people who have reputation, reputations for being a badass, but if you really look at the individuals who they got the reputation by, you'll be like, no, that's like a whack 100. Wack been sitting over there, you know, doing this thing. Shout out to him. Not hate it. But Stitch is not about that. Brown Horn, appreciate that. 
Stitches is not a Stitches was not about that. He was just a loud mouth dude. But again, you know what I mean? Um, it's so many people with reputations for being like, oh man, whoo, he a Rick Mahorn. No, Draymond Green is not a Rick Mahorn. He's not an Anthony Mason. He's not an Xavier McDaniel. No, he's not. Please don't, don't let this deceive you. He's in a weak era of a weak era of basketball where niggas is weak. Where you can get in somebody like Kevin Durant's face and say, nigga, you a bitch. Kevin Durant is not built like that. But he would have never did that with a Charles Oakley. He would have never got into the face of a Charles Oakley and told Charles Oakley that you's a bitch. He would have never got in the Philadelphia 76ers Charles Barkley's face and said, uh, you's a bitch. No. He would have never did that. See, I'm talking basketball right now, so I know this is going to go over a lot of y'all head if you don't come from that era. But he would have never did that. He would have got put on his back. Rick Mahorn would have stood up there and made him into a bitch. Do you understand me? He pulled it on a I'll be sure R&B lookalike ass nigga. And this ain't the disrespect Jordan Poole blesses to him. But you can see the dude is soft. You can see he's not about that life. You get no points with individuals that's not about that life. I do not like bullies. Bullies need to be bullied. You know? And now you done fucked up the chemistry with your team. You done put hand, you done emotionally reacted to the point where, you know, motherfuckers is just really keeping it cool in front of the public. But just to keep that shit all the way 100, man, he took that man's manhood and played basketball with it in front of the world. No man wants to be done like that. It was memes everywhere. And see, let me say this. Jordan Poole not built like that. Thank God he not. Because it's some niggas that wouldn't have gave a fuck about being in the NBA. They would have sat up there and seen uh, Draymond's ugly ass in the parking lot and shot the fuck out of him. Just like Draymond emotionally reacted, it's some niggas that would have emotionally reacted right with his ass. Right with his ass. You're not about to be having memes around me all on Instagram and everybody think I'm a bitch. Uh-uh. Yeah, Vernon Maxwell was with the business. He was with the business. Vernon Maxwell will come in the fan stands and beat your ass. <laughs> Vernon was with the business. Uh, but again, this could have went in so many ways. See, this is all I'm going to say. Always when you emotionally react, niggas that emotionally react, they always think about what they going to do, but they never think about what the next man going to do. And let's just say if a person can be, because see, a person can get so embarrassed, they might not even be about that life. But they so embarrassed and you didn't hurt his manhood to the point where I have to do something. I have to do something. Yeah, Latrell Sprewell, he was with that. I have to do something. You know, when my when your family, your friends, everybody, and then just think about that. You know what I mean? You know how you tell your bitch to shut up? Bitch, be quiet. Or bitch, be woo, 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 woo. But once your bitch see you get dropped the way the Jordan Poole got dropped, she might not shut up so fast the next time you tell her to shut up. You might tell your woman, bitch, be quiet. She might be like, no, nah, bitch, you be quiet. You didn't tell Draymond that shit when Draymond told your motherfucking ass to be quiet and he made you bow down, so you ain't going to talk to me like that. <laughs> you know, after he got dropped the way he did, man, that bitch, that bitch might sit up there and say, no, nah, nigga, no, nah, before I shut up, call Draymond. Call Draymond. 
Carl Draymond. On, she might bust out on King David. On, on King David, Carl Draymond right now. On BD, on BD, call, call, call him right now. You know what I mean? That same bitch that used to get quiet, that same bitch that used to respect you. Now all of a sudden, you know what I mean? Now that she done seen you get dropped the way you got dropped, like, oh no. Cause I ain't gonna lie, he did. He after getting dropped like that, son, you need to go to the weight room, you need to get boxing classes. You playing in the NBA, you should be able to afford it. Yeah, go and get them boxing classes, get some kung fu classes, get all of that shit. Yeah, invest in yourself, son, because you should not have got dropped like I'm talking about. I know he caught you off guard, but whoo. When I tell you that nigga did a raiding, he did a raiding move for Mortal Kombat. That man, I, I know, keep it real now. I ain't trying to make light of this situation, but that nigga Draymond flew to that man. He flew to him. You know what I mean? Connected. And I just want to say that, you know, after something like that, man, you need to hit the weight room. You need to hit the weight room harder than Scottie Pippen hit the weight room in 94. Niggas that know the NBA know what I'm talking about. Niggas that know the hit, know basketball history know what seeing saying. Nigga, you need to hit the weight room harder than Pippen did in 94. You need to be in the weight room every day. You know what I mean? Nigga, you need to be working out, boxing lessons, kung fu lessons, all of that type of shit. Nigga, you was never supposed to get, oh my God. But let me say this, let me say this. Anybody can get dropped. Let me put that out there. Anybody can get, I know this YouTube where everybody, you know, have a fake persona. Like they could just beat everybody up. Everybody got this. Uh, they never took no L's. Okay, let me be the first YouTuber to let. Sending got his ass whooped. Sending been jumped. Sending been stabbed. Sending been shot at. Never been shot, though, by the mercies of God. But I have been stabbed. Have got my ass whooped. Have been jumped. You know, and got wounds, battle wounds. I'm um, battle tested. You know what I mean? Uh, to show. Okay? So, again, you can be dropped. Tyson was dropped. Ali was dropped. Roy Jones was dropped. You're not going to... Matter of fact, I don't even want to hear no more. After this. Sonny Liston was dropped. If these individuals can get dropped, who the fuck is you? Who the fuck is you? I don't even want to hear it. So just off of that, you know what I mean? You could get dropped. I mean, one time a nigga... Uh, <laughs> This, this take me back to prison. Uh, a nigga was, yeah, nigga, I ain't never been knocked out, nigga, on bloods, nigga, on bloods. Nigga, ask me, ask about my situation, nigga. Ask me about my situation, nigga. Ask them about me, nigga, on bloods, nigga. I've never been knocked out, nigga. Woo, 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 woo. And he was just going hard, man. And, oh, my God. As a matter of fact, scratch that. No, that was not prison. That was CCDC. I'm tripping. Um, yeah, in that North Tower. You know what I mean? Yeah, nigga. You know what I mean? Ask about me, nigga. Ask about me, nigga. Run my name, nigga. Run my name, nigga. Yeah, nigga on God, nigga. Run my name, nigga. On bloods, nigga. Every, you know, when they get worked up, everything is just nigga. You know, they wasn't saying on G-O-D then, but uh, that's how even these bitches talk now. They be around these bitches. I, I can't stand a bitch that be trying to act like niggas. I can't stand with bitches. Yeah, on G-O-D, nigga. On G-O-D, nigga. Yeah, on God in heaven, nigga. On God in heaven, nigga. Yeah, on bloods, nigga. On, on nigga. <laughs> Everything is nigga. Everything is on G-O-D. Everything is on God in heaven. Everything is, I can't stand bitches. Like, I don't even know how y'all fuck with them type of bitches, boy. On, on, on my soul, I don't know how y'all fuck. Nigga. On God in heaven, nigga. On G-O-D, nigga. Appreciate that, too. On bloods, nigga. On bloods. On my horn, right. On my horn. <laughs> <coughs> but listen, the same nigga that said he got he ain't never been knocked out. Why he ended up getting knocked out though? Why was he like 6'1 and a good 215? And he got knocked out by a nigga that was 5'7 
that was like 160 pounds soaking wet. Knocked him out. Out of there. Out of there. Out of there. Got him out of there. Why? So with that being said, you know, anybody can get put down. Anybody. And I know some of y'all was even like, damn, P. Damn, P. I, I don't know what you're saying. Damn, folks. You know what I mean? You must ain't watch my videos. I done told, I've been told that. Yeah, Sin done got his ass whooped. Yeah, Sin done been jumped on. Yeah. And I didn't have to tell that, but, you know, by me being the truth, I can't tell you nothing but the truth. And, nigga, if you was really fighting like that, if you come from an era where you had to fight every day at school, you had to fight going to school. You had to fight going, go, coming back from school. And especially if you went to a school where the majority was the ops, come on, man. You can't tell me no stories like you never got your ass whooped. Come on, man, knock that off. It's almost that shit almost comical, like a nigga talking about he been pimping 20 years and never been knocked for a bitch, man. You know, niggas is comedians, man. Yeah, niggas is comedians. You know what I mean? Seeing them been hit on the head with matter of fact, while I was uh whooping one nigga ass. Another nigga sat up there and took a crate. He took a crate and put it upside Sin's head. True story. <laughs> you know, one of the little GDs, man, sat up there, man, took a whole crate and he, bow, you know what I mean, right in the middle of my motherfucking head and shit. You know what I mean? I had all type of, man, I can tell you all type of motherfucking shit, man. You know? But now, what I will tell you is, you know, that's just that adrenaline, boy, because, you know, while the shit was going, I stayed whooping dudes' ass. That's one thing about me, man. You know what I mean? When you demon possess, you just demon possess. And when you sitting over there really, uh, you know, into it, you into it. But, man, when I tell you, after that shit was over, man, I felt everything. I felt everything. You know what I mean? I felt every motherfucking thing, man. You know, got to fight hard. Yes, you do. You know, but that was a, a whole different era. But at the same time, I thought I had it hard. I really didn't because at least I was able to go to the court. At least I was able to have a childhood. At least we was able to fight. Nowadays, niggas is uh, shooting, man. Uh-uh. Damn, saying got hit with a milk crate full of rock. Damn. P, listen, man. That man sat up there and bust my head with that crate, man. <laughs> I was putting hands on his friend, man. And that nigga took that crate, man. And he, I could call my stepdaddy now. He remember that shit. We was all outside, man. You know? Uh, I got, man, I could tell you so many, so many stories. I just let them tell their little Chicago story. A lot of these niggas be lying from the shot, man. They, you know, they, that's, it's, it's, it's not lining up. It's not lining up, but I ain't going to get into that. I'm going to let niggas continue to eat, get their little YouTube check. I ain't trying to step on toes, but I be listening to certain stories and it don't line up. You know, it don't line up, but teachers on, teachers on, get your money, man. Get your hustle on, you know, but again, you know, uh, anybody that's really been a fighter that was fighting every day, you didn't have some L's before. You didn't have some, but one thing you learn from it, you know what I mean? I'd rather sit up there and get my ass up. Just like, okay, I don't want to talk about it too much, but Kelby was supposed to sit up there and fight Sharp in uh, Almighty. Yeah, yeah. The nigga I was raised to be, what the shit that them niggas was doing, man, hell no. Nah. Especially a young, young nigga too, uh, 19, 20 years old, man, it took off, man. Bink, 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 bink. And if I and guess what? One thing I was taught, if I would have got my motherfucking ass whooped, I still would have walked away with my pride, though. I would have walked away with my pride. You know, we would have got into it. It would have been something just with a nigga telling me to, to, to sit up there and take my motherfucking jacket off. You know, I would have slipped up. See, this is when you know you're not conformed all the way. You know what I mean? Uh, niggas know what I'm talking about. You slip up, be like, nigga on Larry, nigga on David, a nigga cuss, a blood, <laughs> nigga on chief, you got me fucked up. 
Nigga on BPSC. <laughs> you know, that 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 other side that the people in the game don't know it come out. You know, certain people press certain buttons. Be appreciate that too, man. Good looking. You know, but yeah, even if you get your your ass whooped, then you know, and then you gotta look at it like this. Especially that's why I would have been looking at it, you know, uh if I get into a fight. You know, whatever. You know what I mean? Even if I get my ass whooped, well, guess what? I'm about to be the hottest thing on YouTube. So now I got to come out with music. I got to come out with merch. It's time to create a channel. You know what I mean? Kelby wasn't thinking. But to each his own. To each his own. To each his own. He would have been the hottest thing. And nobody wouldn't have gave a fuck about him getting his ass whooped. Why? Because he's a white, young little boy. They would have just loved the fact that he had enough heart to sit up there and go off. You know what I mean? Like, nigga, who is you talking to? Nigga, you don't even, nigga, you don't even talk to your wife like that, nigga. You don't even talk to your motherfucking wife like that, nigga. Stop screaming at me, talking about take your jacket off. You don't even tell your wife to take her motherfucking jacket off. You know? And I guarantee you, if he would have just had a little bit of that in him, you know, um, it would have it would have been some bitches that would have got their pussy wet like ooh ooh <laughs> them bitches would have said ooh now he ain't got a pimp bone in his body no he ain't, he ain't no goddamn pimp but you know as far as the man shit bitches would have been like ooh ooh Kelby ooh Kelby stand up for himself ooh Matt Kelby ooh Matt Kelby <laughs> you know, but as as hey hey listen, matter of fact, hold on, y'all know it's coming. Listen, I have to, I have to. I wouldn't even be myself. Hold on, where that shit at? Where is that shit? Damn. Hold on, hold on. Where my song at? I ain't gonna lie. The more that the interview kept going, okay, I done found it. The more that the interview kept going, this is how I felt. I'm just keeping it real with you. This is how Sin felt, man. Watching Kelby up there, just sitting over there, just getting called all type of bitches and all the type of shit. This is how I felt. I was like, damn, Kelby. So Come on, Kevin. Damn. What nigga, you a bitch. Nigga, you not a pimp. And now I'm hearing this. So easily. Easily. <laughs> Set me aside. <laughs> you made a fool of me. Tell me. Nigga, you a bitch, nigga. Nigga, you a bitch, nigga. You ain't no pimp, nigga. You ain't no pimp, nigga. You ain't never, you ain't shit, Kelvin. You ain't woo, 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 woo. I'm like, damn. I feel so bad, man. But if he had fault, or at least, you know, not went there physically, but went there verbally, he could have had, after that, everybody would have, man, he could have created a channel, and motherfuckers would have sit up there and like, he could have came out with a song, Mac who? Mac who? Mac, Mac, Mac Kelby, Mac, Ke <laughs> who is it? Mac Kelby, Mac, Ke who is it? Mac, Ke <laughs> he could have came out with all type of shit. He would have had a cold fan base. Motherfuckers would have been like, man, you know, Mac Kelby stood up for himself. He fought, or at least if he didn't fall, you could have verbally popped it and made them niggas swing on you. Could have been like, hey man, man neither one of y'all pimps is sharp. You a white man, man. You know, a white man fighting against a white man, man. That's a divided house, man. You know what I mean? What you doing, man? And hey, man, why you keep bringing this bitch up, man? You know what I mean? You, you sound like you really into this bitch. If you want to sit up there and have sex, you know what I mean, with the bitch, hey, man, I can set that up for you, man. You know what I mean, sharp? You <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> you know? And he could have really, he could have really said some shit. And hey, man, why you got this rapper, man, in this powder blue ass shit, in this powder blue jogging suit, man, talking to me crazy, man? Hey, man, this nigga, if, if I ain't a pimp, he ain't a pimp either. 
You know what I'm saying? He could have really went there, but he didn't. You know, but teach his own. Teach his own. <laughs> yeah, teach his own. He could have went there, but, you know, teach his own. You know, teach his own. He could have been the hottest thing smoking, but teach his own. You know, he just stood there and just took it. See, I'm not talking about pimping because he's not a pimp. He don't have a chance of being a pimp. But just as a man, just as a man to just allow somebody to just keep talking to you this crazy, knowing that women is watching. Hell no. You know what I mean? Hell no. No, you should have heard head bust a little scratch. I don't know what the hell you talking about, but thank you for the fire. Appreciate the fire. I just don't know what the hell you talking about. All right, but getting back to this game, I never left. I just had to slide that in, man. But Draymond Green emotionally reacted to the point where uh, he might not, pretty much, he might be off of Golden State, uh, you know, after this year. And just to keep it real, I know some of y'all going to be like, but Pete Golden State ain't need him no way. I know, but, you know, Draymond was never supposed to get in Kevin Durant's face and get, get in his face and, and call a nigga that's not with that and call him a bitch-ass nigga and then told him, you know you a bitch. He didn't just say he a bitch. He got in that man's face in front of front of millions of people and said, you know you's a bitch. Like, you know it. I'm not even telling you nothing new. You been new this shit. You know you a bitch. <laughs> you know you a bitch. You said off to L.A.? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where he's going to go, but I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie now that, you know, him being on the Lakers, I don't, you know. The Lakers are already starting off terrible, man. That nigga, uh, Russell, Russell Westbrook, uh, I'm, and I hope Russell turn this thing around, but nigga, you don't go no game zero for 11. No, no. Hell no. Hell no. Nigga, you were supposed to be shooting shots all summer long. How the fuck do you have a zero for 11 game? My Lord. But that's another subject. But again, emotionally reacting has fucked up money for him. You stupid if you don't think so. Because Draymond is really the like heart and soul of the Golden State Warriors. At least that's what, how people looked at him. But, you know, with the getting in Kevin's face and then the situation with Jordan Poole, you know, it makes you look like, damn, you know, uh, maybe the problem wasn't The problem really is you. Yeah, you just bringing a, a a bad vibe, you know what I mean, to the team. Yeah, uh-uh. So I don't know, man. I don't know. It's a very good possibility. He may be gone, and he definitely fucked up that big contract. You know, he fucked up that big contract, man. But, I mean, to each his own. To each his own, man. Let me see. Uh, Hold on. Let me do this. Oh, ass niggas be sitting over there texting, calling like, I know you. I don't know you. There we go. Oh, and let me throw this in there, man. Uh, I know y'all going to continue to do it, but I'm just here to sit, just let you know. I have to while I have the chance. Some of you niggas is some whole ass niggas. You know, and you, you be doing shit and it's like, damn, man, you a grown ass man. Why are you calling my phone? At four or five in the morning. And y'all know I don't want to change my numbers because, you know, one, uh, anybody will tell you in this lifestyle, you never know when an ex ho or a family member, somebody that you want to talk to, you know, a woman, you know, uh, hit your phone. You know, because my motherfucking ass, you know what I mean? Sometimes the phone, the ring, I'm thinking it's a bitch or an ex ho or, you know what I mean? A, you know, because if I ain't got you saved in my phone, I'm thinking that, you know, you, you might you might be, you know, and I was right. You know, a few days ago, you know, a bitch that I ain't heard from and since I don't know when, you know what I mean, out of that Tennessee, you know, hit my line. That's why I like to keep my, my number the same. 
That's why I like to keep my number the same. I don't want to change my number. But you have idiots that will hit my phone at four or five in the morning just to breathe. Seeing what they be saying. Niggas just be breathing. I say, hello? I'm talking about breathing like Biggie in that, you know, the more money, more problems. That's how they be breathing on the phone. Ain't saying a goddamn thing. Then you got niggas that be texting. Ain't talking about, yeah, saying I really need to talk to you and, you know, woo, 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 woo. And I be like, damn, man, niggas is really full-fledged homosexuals, man. I don't know you, man. Why are you hitting me at this time of night? Why are you thinking about me? Seriously. If it wasn't for these ex-hoes, if it wasn't for family members, if it wasn't for friends that might have changed the number, I would have been changed uh, certain numbers. Because you niggas, it's weird. That's some weird shit to do. Just weird. Weird. I expect bitches to be bitches. But God damn, a grown ass man. Ooh, it's for something in the morning. Let me go ahead and call sin. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I hope that I don't wish death upon you. I wish you get you some money. I wish nothing but currency and good ass pussy up on you. I really hope you find something to do. Just leave me the fuck alone. Get my likes up to 800. Everybody hit the like button. But, okay, getting back to another mentally respond, emotionally react uh, type of situation. As y'all know, I didn't even put dude name in the title. Because the more acknowledgement that you give him, the more empowerment that you give to his platform, to his meaningless platform. Now, I understand that Charleston White be doing some, you know, a lot of work within the community, and that's cool. But see, this is the thing. When you start saying anything and everything, you know, like playing with rape, it's just certain things you don't play with. I know he be doing his best to be a comedian. And see, y'all have to understand, there's a difference from somebody that's naturally funny versus somebody that's trying too hard that has to say things for shock value. Shock value. Yeah, you know, yeah, I took, <laughs> yeah, I took some pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Charleston, what you talking about? Yeah, man, I'm just talking about that time, when, you know, when I took some pussy. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I told them, I told them every bitch need they pussy taken every now and then. Hell, 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 hell yeah. And, you know, y'all start thinking that these rape jokes, you know what I mean, is funny. And look at the face that it's coming from. So you damn right individuals believe that you know what I mean? That, you know, you're not playing. You have to remember. See, let me just say this to ugly people. Some of you ugly people, and I told y'all that I'm racist towards y'all. God got to bless me. When I give my life back to God, he got to sanctify me and get that out of my spirit. I told you I have a racist spirit towards ugly people. But a lot of you ugly people, you've been getting beside yourself. Seeing what, what you mean by that? Meaning that, you know, uh, playing around with rape jokes. Like, did you forget that you ugly as hell? First of all, you should have had enough common sense to say, you know what? I can't say, I can't play around with the rape shit because by me being ugly as hell, everybody going to think that I actually did the shit because I do look a damn fool. It'd be different if I was handsome or, or fly or something like that or in shape or something like that. But by me being an oldest Thorpe looking ass nigga, that looks a damn fool with one eye. You a five foot five nigga with shoes on by the grace of God, you know, and you look like Otis Thorpe with one eye. You know, common sense will tell you that if you say anything about raping a bitch, yes, the world is going to believe you. Why? Because you look a damn fool. They're going to say, yeah, that sounds just about right. You look like an individual to take some pussy because, you know, ain't no bitch just giving the pussy up to you because you handsome. 
You look a fool. You fit the description of somebody that would take some pussy. Yeah, you look like Otis Thorpe. Yeah, that's, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Otis Thorpe with one eye, five for five with shoes on. Yeah, that sounds just about right. You know, you're not thinking. So again, man, you know, uh, this is somebody who plays on the emotions of people for attention and they fall for it every time. Boosie was right. Whoever told Boosie, I forgot uh, who Lil Boosie said. He said, uh, family member told him, do not acknowledge Charleston White. Whoever, whoever told, whoever told uh, Boosie that, they love Boosie. They really fuck with him. Because acknowledging Charleston White and going back and forth with him, it's not the same as going back and forth with Gangster. It's not the same. You go back and forth with Charleston White, you know what I mean? He talking to them people, working with them, and them people like him. They, The police, they think that the shit that he do is funny. So, yeah, they going to fuck with him. So the best thing for you to do is speak in the vernacular of silence so he don't open up a can of worms and try to reopen cases and all that goofy shit. Sometimes you got to know when to fold them. It's not that he's more uh, funny because... If people really just keep it all the way 100 when me and him went at it, he said a few things in it, but for the most part, no, nah, he couldn't go back and forth and, and roast, you know what I mean, with the roast master. Hell, motherfuck, no. You know, that shit was, you know, cool. You know, a little of the shit that he was saying, because, he, you know, it's just funny to see an ugly person, you know, with one eye, just say some of the shit Charleston been saying. And I told you, yes, that shit do be funny. When Charleston be like, you ain't got no, you ain't got no, you ain't got, you ain't got no spoons. You ain't got no spoons in your motherfucking house. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't got no tables. You ain't got no chairs at your tables. You don't, you don't got no stairs. You don't, you don't got no stairs to walk up there to your room. You don't got, you, you ain't got no motherfucking doors in your house. You ain't got no wife cooking you breakfast. You ain't got that. You know? Hold on for a minute. Let me call him back. You know, you you ain't got that going on. Let me just tell him what. Hey, hey, cuz. I'm I'm live on YouTube right now. I'm gonna get back at you. Are you on you on live right now, you said? Yeah, I'm live on YouTube right now. I'm gonna get at you after I finish. Alright, go ahead. Alright. Alright. You know what I mean? It yes, it's funny. To watch somebody in an Adams family ass house with Frankenstein furniture, with Methuselah chairs and shit, you know, make these type of statements. Yes, that is very funny. Yes. You know, at times he will say some things that's funny. And I will admit, uh, T.I. son, King, he do look a fool. I just don't go in on Tiny because she's loyal. She got some characteristics that it's a famine in the land for. But yes, Tiny do look a fool. But I bet I bet back in the day that that head was fire. Some tell me that Tiny know how to suck dick in. She got some, I, you, I know some of y'all might not agree, but I think that, you know what I mean, that bitch has some, uh, uh, yeah, I think her pussy was blessed back in the day. I don't know how it's moving that, but I really do. I think Tiny has some blessed ass pussy and some good ass head, you know, and I'm going to say something. I know some of y'all ain't bold enough to say, you know what I mean? Yeah, you can disagree all you want to, but it's a lot of ugly bitches with some good ass pussy. See, y'all not going to keep it real. I know I just got to be the sacrificial lamb and keep it 100. You know what I mean? Hey, listen, man, I didn't have some good times with some of these ugly bitches. See, know what he talking about. Every bitch that I pimped on and every bitch that I had in life was not no beauty pageant. I'm going to keep it real. I ain't going to let an ugly bitch expose me. You ain't going to see no bitch looking like Frankie Lyman doing no interview five years from now talking about, yeah, me and Simple was together. And you be like, see, and you said all you had was Beyonce's and shit. Uh-uh. You know what I mean? I'm going to tell the truth. Every bitch that sinned and had his dick in was not no beauty pageant, was not no uh, eight Marie's. They was not, no, no. It was some bitches that, you know, you only see at three, four in the morning. You know, them, them, them a hundred dark midnight hours, you know, yeah. Touch them in the midnight hour, in the, yeah, in the midnight hour. 
you know, that's all I want. Hold on, let me get it. Can't do uh, that's fact P. I can't do the tiny though. I'm not talking about doing the bullet. See, you saying that, but I don't know. I don't know. Four in the morning, dick hard. See, I just, I'm just, see, I'm just speaking the vernacular of realness, man. How many niggas then been to a city? You just visited in, maybe it was a funeral, or maybe it was a show, it was an event, or maybe you in the lifestyle, you was campaigning. And I know the pimps ain't gonna keep it real because you know they they did. I tell you sometimes the pimp and hoe be reminding me of church. You know people, you know they're not gonna keep it all the way one hundred, right? But sin ain't always being what he is now. And I done did some chipping. I told y'all, you know, chipping, chipping, seeing what's chipping. You know, I done fucked on some squares that I was endeavoring to, to turn out. And, and yes, you know what I mean? She got the dick bef before I became the number one draft pick, you know, in her life. I'm just telling you like it is. You know, don't nobody got to expose me. I can expose my motherfucking self. But, okay, check it out, though, right? Let's say you done hit the town. And you fall up in some clubs and, you know, uh, they closing down at two o'clock. And see, when you didn't live in a place like Vegas, I keep telling y'all, if you ever lived in that Vegas, it's kind of hard to make that transition. It's hard to go from living in Vegas, a 24 hour city and go to somewhere in the south where everything closed down at two and you looking for something to get into. And you driving around and driving around. And as you driving around, you see this big ass booty in these tights, in these leggings, you know, with no waist, ass just gang banging. And the bitch might be darker than a hundred midnights. Oh, let's tell the truth about it. You know what I mean? Or she just might got that surprise look. How many know about a bitch that looks surprised all the time? She just looks surprised. Her eyebrows look surprised. She just got that surprise look. You know, awkward looking motherfucker. But she got lips and they glossy. She got lips and they glossy. She got federal lips, not state lips. Federal lips. All right. The head look like it's lethal. The bitch look like she about to suck dick to bad times become good. And you didn't drove around and you didn't finally seen something and you, you, you talk to her for a little bit. Next thing you know, she in the car. <laughs> and I'm just keeping it all the way 100 with you. I didn't have some cool times in my life. With some ugly bitches. I'm just got to keep it all the way 100 with. Did I take a picture? Did I take a video? No. You know what I mean? But the bitch was ugly. But at the same time, she got used as a vessel to relieve my stress at that time. All right? You know, you like, damn, P. You know what I mean? That bitch look like Wesley Snipes in the face. Hey, listen. Never mind this bitch looking like uh, Cliff Leviston. You know, in the face. Never mind this bitch looking like Kevin Willis in the face. Hey, hey, that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. You know what I mean? See, you, that's your problem. You in my business. But no, I'm just telling it like it is. Sin didn't have a few, not a lot. You know, not, we're not going to tell no lie. But yes, I done had a few bitches that I, if I could go back like, damn, why you do that? But at the same time, the pussy was the shit. The pussy was the shit, though. You know what I mean? Blessed. Touch, somebody, touch your neighbor and say, blessed. God blessed this woman's pussy. This pussy was, man, this was just heavenly. Hey, hey look, the best way to describe, because I'm even thinking about an ugly bitch now, and that pussy was good than the motherfucker. The best way to describe her pussy, when you ever get a chance, and get in the comment section, too, and be like, Sin for the Peace sent me here. If you ever get a chance, listen to the Temptations sing a song called Heavenly. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, ugly as hell. But her pussy, her pussy, you understand me, remind me of Temptations, the song Heavenly. You know, but that's another subject. But again, man, yes, Tiny Son is ugly as fuck. Lil' King, matter of fact, 
Lil' King looked just like that little boy that I told y'all about when, uh, be, this before the game, I told y'all that I was endeavoring to fuck on this bus driver. But when she went to the babysitter's house to pick up her son, he came out butt-ass naked and he was albino. King looked just like her son. I'm not trying to make no jokes. You might be an albino motherfucker and you listen like, man, I'm unsubscribing from this shit. Man, he making fun of albino. No, I'm not. Blessings to all y'all. But I'm just simply saying that y'all ugly though. And, you know, yes, King do look a fool. King look, it's no way getting around it. It's no way getting around it. I know T.I. wanted, you know, all his children to come out looking like him. But no, that little boy looked like Tiny and he looked a damn fool. Charleston White do be telling lies. He do say shit for shock value, but we just got to call an ace of ace and a spade of spade. He's not lying on this. King ugly as hell. Yeah, he ugly as hell, man. Yeah, he ugly as hell. I just, you know, you just got to keep it all the way 100. And it's cool, though, to be ugly as hell. Why? Because your father is T.I. Your father's rich. So, you know, because your father is rich, you got money, you, you're going to be well off. So it don't matter about you being ugly. It don't matter, you know, you looking like King Yella's little sister. Because I can't lie, King look like Queen. King look like... The, the little sister of King Yeller. If you ever seen, matter of fact, some of y'all remember, I took the video down because, you know, I put it on my Patreon if you want to see it. But when I roasted King Yeller that time, and when I told y'all that King Yeller looked like some albino light-skinned dookie, you know what I mean? He do. He look like, and King looks like the little sister of King Yeller. That is the best way to describe it. I wouldn't be surprised if King Yeller and Tiny is related, because all the motherfuckers is ugly. Do you know what I mean? Ugly, ugly as hell. All the motherfuckers is related. Hassan Campbell, King Yella, King uh, Son of T.I., all the motherfuckers, Tiny, all the motherfuckers is related. They look a fool. But, I mean, hey, it don't matter. Your father is T.I., and that's all, you, you ain't got to do nothing in life. You could just chill. You could just chill and be ugly. A bitch going to fuck you and suck your dick because you got some money and you T.I. son. So life is cool. You didn't have to be handsome. He don't have to work out. His daddy's T.I. So he can get some pussy till he D.I. Why? Because his father's T.I. You know? So yeah. So I think that's Charleston being jealous because, see, Charleston just ugly and broke. But King is ugly and rich. It's a difference. You know what I mean? So you got one ugly motherfucker jealous of another ugly motherfucker because he grew up, you know, spoon-fed. He grew up rich. And he don't have the burden of a broke, ugly person. You know, rich, ugly people don't have the burden, you know what I mean, that uh, ugly, broke people do. It's even worse being ugly and broke, you know. So, yeah, you know, when y'all be hearing Charleston talk, that's really his pain. He's speaking from a place of pain. Do you know how painful that is to look like that and to have a height of a bitch and go through uh, life? You know what I mean? Like, hell yeah, he going to be a hateful motherfucker. You goddamn skippy. Nigga, if I look like motherfucking Otis Thorpe with one eye, I'd be talking shit about you motherfuckers too. You got me fucked up. I'm talking about celebrities, rappers, pastors, actors, first ladies of the church, children, and some more motherfucking shit. Now, I believe in God, and my, my belief in God is strong, but if you was to make me, you know, like when the scriptures say he wouldn't put nothing on you that you uh, can't bear. That's why God didn't make me ugly, because he know I couldn't bear that shit. He, he didn't make me look like Charleston White because I might not have had the same belief in God if I was uh, looking like Otis Thorpe with one eye. Yeah, I probably would have been an atheist or something. I would have been a motherfucking agnostic, you know what I mean, uh, if I looked like Charleston and shit. Hell yeah. Motherfucker tried to talk to me about a God and shit like that. Nigga, I cuss you the fuck out. You know, God did me bogus. Nigga, you don't see this foolishness on top of my neck and you trying to tell me about God? Uh-uh. 
God, see, see, God is for people that look like human beings, handsome people, you know, handsome guys and beautiful women. You know, we could believe in God because God has been good to us. But all y'all that look a fool, I don't know, man, 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 blessings to all y'all because that's truly strong faith for you to still believe in God and you look a damn fool. And then some niggas, just imagine, I can just only imagine looking a fool, being ugly, and especially I'm ugly, I'm broke, I'm short, got a little dick, I can't fuck. Like, hell no, I ain't about to leave. Man, I ain't about to believe in no God. Psh, hell no. Hell no. I'm broke, I can't fuck, I look a fool, I ain't got, oh, hell no. Ain't that much personality in the world. But so I, I, hey, that's one thing. I don't fuck with you ugly people, but I fuck with you in that regard that, you know, for you to still have faith and maintain it in that condition, definitely uh, worthy of acknowledgement. Blessings to all of those individuals, man, in, the, in that circumstance. But again, T.I. fell for the okie doke. T.I. fell for the okie doke. He should have had somebody in his corner just like uh, Boosie had somebody in his corner and said no acknowledgement. Because when you give a clown acknowledgement, you only give a clown encouragement to keep performing in the circus. That's it. He should have gave him no acknowledgement. T.I. should have never did no videos going back and forth. Then you got so upset, you on the phone with him. Then he recorded the shit. You stupid. You a celebrity. Did you forget that you legendary? They can't take that away from They can call him a rat, a snitch, all of that, which is true, which is true. Now, I know some of y'all going to get offended because that's your favorite rapper, but no, he is Tips. His name is Tips. He's a legendary rapper, but at the same time, he is he is tips. You can't take that away from T.I., but we got to keep it real. You know, his name is Tips. Because I'm going to forever remember that commercial nigga that you did talking about some, you know, hi, my name is Tip. But today, I want to talk about a different tip. Like, see, the moment that that proceeded out of your mouth, that you want to talk about a different tip. I was like, yeah, I know I can't fuck with you today. No, I can't fuck with you. You see, you want to give me a different tip. See, I was fucking with you when you was TIP. You know what I mean? And doing, I thought you was on some hood, but now you on a different tip. No, 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 no. Today, I want to talk to you about a different tip. If you know somebody that, uh-uh, no, no, no. They played with you like a hoe. They sent you out there like a hoe. That's one thing them people do. They love making uh, gangsters, so-called pimps, all of that, look like a hoe. They want to make you look like a hoe. And that's what they did. Niggas in the game, in the pimp game, get mad at me when I said that them people had Snooky looking like a hoe. It's the truth. And they hate it every time I say that. They be like, man, he's a legend, man. He was a legendary pimp, man. And woo -woo. I don't know no pimps, man, that's uh, checking it from, you know, the feds and hoes. No, no, I ain't trying to get no bankroll from the feds. Then a nigga said out of his mouth, it was a treat to fuck with him. That's how you know a nigga, a bitch-ass nigga. The, no the moment a nigga sit up there and said, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it was a treat to fuck with them too. It wasn't rat shit, it was Mac shit, and they was in agreement with the shit. You know? And what hurt me, what had me looking crazy is that it was GD niggas, and then I'm not gonna get into all that, but those that know law, and you know they law, and for them niggas to sit up there and applaud the shit, be on one accord with the shit, you know what I mean, and, and try to cover up with the shit, I'm like, man... Boy, boy, it's kind of like an older man had told me years ago. Boy, the streets is a joke. The streets a motherfucking joke, nigga. You young niggas, man, stay out the streets. You stay out of criminality. You stay out of the lifestyle of pimping and hoeing, gang banging, gangsta, all of, all of that shit, man. Stay your at, stay a full fledged, one hundred percent square. Stay square, man. 
You know, don't get into something that you think is like this only to get involved in. It's just like damn near every other lifestyle. Hypocrites reaping off the benefits of individuals that can't tell the difference between authentic and fraudulent. Hypocrisy is omnipresent. This lifestyle ain't no different. You know, niggas applauding, snitching. But yeah, man, you know, uh, T.I. did that. You know, he's a legendary rapper, but at the same time, you know, just keeping it above, you know he, you know he had to tell. Anybody with common sense, you don't get out of situations like that without telling. Ralph, appreciate that. Especially the feds? No. Uh-uh. But, you know, to each his own, to each his own. You know what I mean? He, he raising his family. And like I said, you know, you should have stayed out of that. You should have never acknowledged him. You're a multi-millionaire. He's broke. He got one eye. He just a one-eyed old nigga talking crazy in a house with old-ass furniture. And you're going to respond back to Charleston? See, this is why, and you can learn from this too. This is why you have to stay in tune with your value. Because when you realize how valuable you are, then you won't devalue yourself by emotionally reacting to individuals that don't even deserve any attention from you. Because now your acknowledgement is only going to lead to this fool continuing on in the foolery. That's why you mentally respond. We see too many examples from individuals who lost their lives, we seen this. Let's look at the people. King Bond gone. Okay, that's death. Okay, let's look at another death. Not physically, but let's look at it as far as career. What would have happened if Ja Rule would have never acknowledged Fifty Cent? Do I think that Fifty would have made it? Yes. But Get Rich or Die Trying wouldn't be a diamond album if Ja Rule would have never acknowledged Fifty Cent. If Ja wasn't going back and forth, if Ja would have just kept on putting out hits and stayed on his grind and never gave this nigga no time, he would have still been doing that R&B, hip-hop thing, singing hooks, and all of that shit. If he would have just mentally responded, I'm going to pull it out the hat for you now. If he would have just did the Kevin Samuels, Instead of the T.I. P. what you mean by that? Notice everybody. Oh, Kevin Samuels, you're gay. You're a homosexual. You flamboyant. Oh, my God, he gay. He was just in the room with this man. Oh, his wife getting ready to expose him. Kevin was never going on lives, hollering and screaming and going back and forth with comedians and jesters and liars. And he that wasn't he stayed to his message. He never addressed, you know, he would Jay-Z him, indirect but direct, every now and then direct. But for the most part, when Corey Holcomb said that he was gay, Kevin didn't make no video with Corey, uh, Corey uh, Holcomb name in the title. Why? Because he know he can't out nigga that nigga. And if you can't out nigga a nigga, the best thing for you to do, man, is never try to out nigger a nigger. You out nigger the nigger by just being a man. You can't out nigger him, but you can out man him. So what am I saying? Mentally respond. I got into it with him back in the day. You got into it with who? I don't know who you got into it with. I don't remember Kevin Samuels making no video about you and putting your name in the title. <laughs> Yeah, what you're talking about. But again, you know, he never sat up there and tried to, yeah, yeah, you might have had whatever you had with him, but my question to you is this. Did he ever put your name in a title and make a video about you? 
And if he did have a go back and forth, guess what? That was in the many yesteryears. Kevin ain't acknowledged you when he got hot. I'm talking about the Kevin said, not Kevin when he on a blog, nothing big. No, exactly. So that wasn't worth mentioning. I love you, though. But I'm talking about being owned. I ain't talking about when he was the cologne dude and all of that. I'm talking about when he arrived, when the spotlight is on him. That's when it count. Because when the spotlight was on him and everybody was saying this and said, matter of fact, Charleston White said the same thing about him. Yeah, he gay. He did. See this or that. Did he ever make a video about Charleston White? Hell no. Because Kevin knew that he could not out nigga the nigga. But he knew that he can out man you. I can't out nigga you. But I can outman you. What, what am I saying? Oh, I ain't doing nothing but repeating the incomparable teachings of Mel Taylor. You might be able to out-nigger me, but you'll never be able to outman me. That's the teachings of Mel Taylor. I'm going to outman you every time. You might get what you might be more funny. You might be more comical. You might be more niggerfied. You might be able to roast me. But if I stay to my message and I mentally respond instead of emotionally react, then my man is intact. And I don't jeopardize what I'm presiding over, like Ja Ru or like a, a, a King Von. I'm not moving from an emotional place. I'm moving from a logical, intellectual, professional place state of mind, from the discipline state of mind, which makes me more dangerous than any gangster or any so-called real nigga on the planet, being disciplined. Being a disciplined black man makes me more dangerous than any GD, BD, Paru, Crip, Blood, whatever. Whatever them mama raised ass niggas told you who they were, I'm that and then some if you're a disciplined black man. The disciplined black man is more dangerous than any black, uh, than any black nigga, any nigga in any gang. There's no nigga in any gang. There's no nigga in any organization that is more dangerous than the disciplined black man. None. That's who the enemy fear. That's why the Black Panther Party had to be destroyed. Why? Because there was too many disciplined, young, infinite minds coming together on one accord. That's why. For a, a, a divine purpose at that time. You know, that's why that had to be destroyed. I'll get into all that later. But I'm just simply just saying to you, mentally respond. Don't emotionally react. And I'm not saying that because I've mastered it. I'm still striving my damn self. All right. Don't get it twisted. I'm still just like y'all wanted me to make a video about it. I'm not going to make a video about it, but I just mentioned it. Uh, when DJ Academics uh, uh, screaming and going back and forth with them bitches, you know, you got to keep you screaming, talking about some you the prize, you the prize. But if you actually believe the things that you were saying, then you wouldn't even be <laughs> you wouldn't even been with her. Oh, my God, I'm teaching now. If you actually believe what the fuck that you just said out your mouth, I'm the prize. I'm the prize. If you actually believe that, she wouldn't have never even been with you. That's how the bitch know you're lying. That's how the bitch know that you're not the prize. That's how the bitch know that you don't think that. Why? Because if you actually thought that you was the prize, I wouldn't even be here. Oh, my God. Some of these bitches actually really know that. So when you guys start speaking all of that supreme being type shit, I'm the prize, I'm this, I'm that, you trying to convince yourself. That bitch know that uh, you ain't that and you don't even believe that because if that's the truth, if you actually believe that, then your standards would prevent people like her from even being around you. That's how the bitch know that you full of shit. An ancient ass bitch knows she cannot be around a man with standards, a man with principles. She knows that. 
So when an ancient ass bitch hears some ancient ass nigga saying that he the prize and all of this type of shit, man, the bitch looking like, the bitch looking like nigga, knock it off. Knock it off. You don't believe that. Because if you did, you know what I mean? I wouldn't even be with you. You front. You front. Act verse sin would be comedy. Nigga, no. I don't even get opportunities like that. He gave that to the uh, the ain't in the beginner. And you see how that went. That didn't do nothing for him. That shit wasn't even funny. As a matter of fact, just to be real, it ain't really no difference between Kelby and Saint in the Center. Ain't no difference between Dr. B.O.A. and Saint in the Center and Kelby. There's no difference. P, what you mean? There's no difference. You got one guy that got the so-called game from a homosexual. Homosexual knocked at it on his door and he said, I got the game for you. He got the game. He got laced by a fag. All right. Honestly, I like Kelby's introduction. While y'all bullshitting, I like Kelby's introduction to the game better than uh, Ain't in the Beginner. <laughs> if we really going to keep this shit 100, I'd rather sit up there and say that I was on drugs, I was young and impressionable and ignorant at the time, and I was green, and I had two bitches, and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing versus a homosexual knocking on my door to lace, me, to lace my boots. Kelby's introduction to the game is way more, you know what I mean, flyer. I ain't even going to say pimpish. Way more flyer than the ain't in the beginner. Yeah. And y'all, you know, y'all sitting over there laughing and shit like that, but that's real. I'd rather be with two white girls, you know, being, at least people will say, ooh, he was young, he was ignorant, you know, he was green, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I'm young, but what's your excuse for a homosexual feeling comfortable to knock on your door to sit up there and try to lace you and shit like that? Come on, man. The man homosexual, he had key gay. <laughs> he had key gay. Ain't no home, ain't no gay dude feel comfortable to knock on my door like, yes. Um, so you know, I've been seeing you around, and I was like, should I give it to him? No. But then I was like, you know what? He deserves this game. He deserves this game. So I came over here to just knock on your door. I know it's late. I know it's late. But, you know, I'm not trying to be your sneaky link or nothing. I just want to just lace you with this game, you know, and I just want to give you this book, you know, uh, Marquette, Marquette. <laughs> like, yeah, man, it look gay. And that's how, you know, YouTube fucked up because his fans even know his so-called introduction to the game, and they still listening to his dumb ass. But you see how my roasting, you see how my choppings is, he don't even want to say that no more. Getting lessons from a pimp, he don't want to even say that no He said, I don't even want to say it. Right. That's the aftermath of that seeing roasting. That's what them choppings do to you, boy. Trying to fit in. Oh, Poindexter-ass nigga. You got Berkeley graduates that even want to be this goddamn pimpin'. You know, even, 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 even the, even the Berkeley graduates want to be this pimping, man. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's another subject, man. You know, man, enough of the ain't the beginners and all that type of shit. But yeah, Kelby more, Kelby more flyer than them do. He more mackish than them do. But okay, listen, getting back to this game that we never left. Mentally respond. Mentally respond. T.I. didn't do nothing but give more subscribers, more followers, more views, more opportunities uh, for Charleston to uh, generate, you know, some money, you know, some income and welcome a, a new fan base by acknowledging him. Because people said at first it was like, who is this ugly dude? But now, 
when they see you arguing with this nigga and now he's on shade room, now he's on academics, now he on this, he on all of these platforms that got over 20 million followers, 2 million followers and shit like that, all because of your dumb ass acknowledging. So again, it's always beneficial to what? Mentally respond. And don't emotionally react. We see where emotionally react gets you. That gets you killed. That gets you in prison. That gets you broke. I'm going to give you one of the coldest examples. Some of you never heard it. Some of you have. I'm not going to say P name, but I've been told you guys there was once a puddle time. See, once a puddle time? Yeah, it was once a pimpish, you know what I mean, upon time, you know, ancient times, man, in the shot. You know, P, what you what you saying? Man, it was a legendary P back in the day, man. He was really having money, man. You know, he lived three doors down from Oprah. What? Yes, the nigga lived three doors down from Oprah. There was a pimp that was pimping on the level. He was pimping on such a motherfucking, you understand me, prestigious level, on such a level that he was three doors down from Oprah. That's how cold he was pimping. At this time, he was three doors down in Lakeshore Drive from Oprah. All right. And, you know, this bride, man, you know, uh, that he had out of the bras that he had, you know, she was a cold thief. She was stealing like a motherfucker. Yeah, man, she had a, she was a golden glove. You know, they called her Rolex Jessica. You know what I mean? She was stealing like a motherfucker, man. No, nah, this is not Cato. This is some Chicago shit. Um, and so, of course, you know, you guys, you hear about Bishop Don Magic Wine and different ones. And, but this particular P that I'm talking about, he wasn't in no DVDs. He wasn't in, he wasn't in none of that. But, okay, check it out. The bitch, you know, um, you know, decided to, see, this is why I say, leave them drugs or leave that drink, leave that smoke, leave all that alone. But, you know, niggas be liking to get high. Motherfuckers like to get drunk and all that shit like that. And, you know, uh, this one night, the bitch was off her A game because, you know, uh, I believe, I ain't heard the story in a minute, but I think the bitch was drunk. You know, or she allowed herself to get high. One of the two. Or maybe both. I don't know. But she was off her A game. And the trick caught her slipping when she was endeavoring to steal from the trick. And the trick caught the bitch slipping. And the trick sat up there and killed that bitch. Killed her. Took her life. Gone. And um, I know some of you was told that pimps is heartless and, you know, they don't love hoes and shit like that, which is contrary to the truth. But, um, you know, he had so much love, you know, for this hoe. And he was so in love with this hoe that at the time, P did not mentally respond and I guess he wasn't capable at that time. Uh, he was in his feelings about it. He was told that, you know, his woman was killed. And it had mentally really fucked him up to the point where he didn't try to get street justice. He didn't try to get in touch, you know, with people to take care of it. He called the people. He called the police. And the people start, they came over. And when the people came over, they see this nigga. I got I to gotta tell it like it is. They seen this nigga living in this fucking mansion home. They seen these, this nigga with paintings that a nigga shouldn't have. Furniture with, that a nigga shouldn't have. Cars in the driveway that a nigga shouldn't have. Suits that a nigga shouldn't have. Shoes, gaiters that a nigga shouldn't have. You know, living like a way that a nigga shouldn't be living. <laughs> I'm just telling you how them people think of us. You know, living like a king, man. And, uh, yeah, they didn't like that. Hold on. Yeah, they didn't like that. Yeah, they didn't like that at all. P, what they do? Well, you know, they took information from a man and, uh, you know, they took information from, from P and everything like that. But they didn't like the way that nigga was living, man. And so when they investigated the situation, you know, they started putting one and one together. Like, damn, you know, a nigga living in Lakeshore Drive 
got this bitch that got prostitution priors and shit on her. And she's white at that. You know, them people don't play that. And so, make a long story short, they ended up finding out that he was a damn pimp. And even though, you know, he meant to call the police so the dude that killed his, his woman can get arrested to get locked up, but he ended up getting locked up because they ended up investigating his ass. And he ended up losing everything in the process. So you lose your liberty in society. You lose your currency. You lose, um, you know what I mean, just your normal day life. Now you locked up. You in the joint. And you end up doing like, I believe he did like nine years. And then only to get out of prison after doing a nine-year bid and they deport you. They deported him. He can't even come back. He's endeavoring to get back, but man, he ain't been back to the country, man, and I don't know when. Him emotionally reacting instead of mentally responding, thinking with his heart, moving emotionally instead of logically is the reason why he's in the position that he's in today. Lost the mansion home, lost the money, lost everything. Dean got deported, lost nine years of his life, all because of one move involving the police and some shit that they had no business being involved in. He ended up getting, you could pretty much say he put himself in that, he put himself in jail. He put himself in prison. Emotions. Emotions fucked up everything. Now, I know it's it's understandable why he was emotional. You know, and I've never had a, a hoe die on my watch. I ain't never had no hoe get killed on my watch. That's a circumstance I ain't never been in and I don't want to be in by the grace and mercies of God. But, um, you know, I'm just telling you, just showing you different examples of individuals who lost out because they emotionally reacted. And that's why it was so important for me to show you and give my uh, opinion on Sharp and uh, Andre Taylor, Dre's interview, because this is the uh, one of the best examples of mentally responding. How would you felt? How would you, uh, you know, dealt with a situation after seeing the police gun down your little brother? Sit up there and killed his little brother. Killed Shay, the apple of his eye. Killed him. Most niggas in that circumstance, man, moving in their emotions, man, let's get some guns and let's just shoot different officers. And YouTube, I'm not saying that to encourage, you know, uh, people to shoot officers. I'm just saying what people, you know, do if they was in their feelings, if they just lost their little brother to the police. Most of you would have just... Man, let's get some guns. Let's, man, let's go to the police station and just, you know, man, just have it all out. Just delete, start deleting police officers. And by the way, I see that's been going around. Niggas been using my shit. <laughs> now I got everybody saying delete it. But yeah, just go around, man, and just start deleting police officers, man. Just start deleting out everybody. You know, deleting every motherfucking police officer that you see. But instead of him emotionally reacting, and, you know, uh, encouraging other individuals uh, to pretty much go on a suicide mission. He mentally responded. Instead of emotionally, emotionally reacting with his heart, he mentally responded with the game. And because of that, we benefited from it. If you go to uh, Washington, you know what I mean? If you sit up there, you understand me? Hold on, I don't, I don't know why the comments... Okay, there... Yeah, there we go. You know what I mean? Uh, if you sit up there, you understand me? And, and, and motherfucking, you understand me? Go to that mother goddamn Seattle, you'll see. You can look it up myself. I'm not lying to you. Some of y'all new to the channel. I know some of y'all like, man, he just talking. Ain't no goddamn pimp, you know, change no law. Ain't no goddamn pimp, you know what I mean, uh, led, uh, you understand me? You know, the country. Of uh, course, Dre gonna say the country. But led them to uh, police accountability. 
change the whole damn law. Well, now the police have to be held accountable. They just can't sit up there, you understand me, and gun you down. Yeah, the first street czar. Oh, my God. And they were so in their feelings, man, when they gave, I believe they gave Drake, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe they gave him 150000 yeah, they was willing to pay him 150000 And it really wasn't, of course, to a square, that's a lot of money. But it wasn't the fact of the amount of money. It was the fact that, of course, that who the money was coming from. And for a pimp to be in a position like that, somebody, of course, he hasn't been in the game, you know, in over 20 years. But society will always see him as that pimp. So to go from you know, criminality to receiving currency of $150,000 legally, you know, every year, you know, a office job looking over the city, you know, uh, I would say that, yeah, mentally responding man got more benefits than emotionally reacting. I see the consequences. I see the demise of individuals, man, who emotionally reacted. You know, I can show you too many examples of individuals that emotionally reacted. We see we see Tupac's uh, demise. Pac would still be here if he had mentally responded instead of emotionally reacted. So we don't need to react with emotions. We need to respond with intellect. We need to respond with intelligence. We need to respond with the game. We need to don't let your heart get into the driver's seat of your life and drive you to a destination called nowhere. Yeah, as a result, you know, Dre's doing better than ever. As a result, Dre got more uh, currency. He got more, you know what I mean, prosperity, man. He, he's doing very good as a result. Yeah, so I see the difference between mentally responding and emotionally reacting. That emotionally reacting thing, that ain't doing nothing but you know, strengthening the hand of the enemy. That's all that's going to do. So, yeah, I don't want to emotionally react. I want to mentally respond because that's what men do. Lead beyond pain. You know? So, yeah, I just wanted to drop that on you, man. You know what I mean? You know, when different individuals, you know, be bothering you, trolling you all on the Internet, you got to remember what Kate Red said. You know, that's like arguing with a ghost. You know, acknowledging different individuals that ain't about shit. You don't know them from a can of paint. Hey, matter of fact, one nigga, he got up in my DM, right? I ain't know who this nigga is. The nigga, the nigga uh, got up in my goddamn uh, DM. He's like, you a bitch ass nigga. <laughs> Guess what I did? I just laughed. I did not uh, type back to him and have a type war. Nigga just got in my got in my DM. Man, you a bitch ass nigga. <laughs> what did you expect me to do? Write a plethora to him? You wanted me to write a new scroll to him? You wanted me to write a new King James version in the uh in the DM with him and go back and forth? Hell no. That's not for me to do. Nigga got in my DM. Hey man, you a you you a bitch ass nigga. I'm like, damn. Y'all know how I am. I'm like, damn. You know, damn. Like, damn, that's how you feel about me? Damn. You know, you, you, you's a bitch-ass nigga. Yeah, I didn't go in the, uh, get in the DM and, nigga, where you at, nigga? Where you at, nigga? Where you at? We can meet. Let's do this. Like, uh, how about we don't? Just like with one goofy, uh, I'm trying to think of this one goofy, I'm not even gonna say this goofy's name. But you know, the dude, the lady boys dude. Yeah, the little fake tough guy. The wannabe gangster. You know what I mean? The the dude that never really was successful selling dope or hope. You know, the homosexual. The nigga that looked like uh uh <laughs> wet bread, nasty sausages, chest look like nasty sausages, just looking terrible, man. I don't know why he sit up there and took off his shirt. You know what I mean? I'm making improvements. Bitch, no, you ain't. You know what I mean? Just hella gay. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about he got, you know, lady boys and all of that type of shit. Yeah, he making videos, put my name in the title because 
He need my name and other names like that to generate some views because ain't nobody watching his tired ass videos. He can't go live and a hundred people show up. Ain't a hundred people going to show up to listen to his ass talk. Come on, man. He wearing dingy ass above the rim FUBU jerseys and shit with Paco shorts. Nigga, we didn't even know Paco ma still made shorts. God damn, nigga got on a, a, a fucking FUBU jersey with Paco shorts with Dada Supreme shoes on and shit. You know what I mean? Going live, just talk. Nah, 100 people is not about to show up. They don't want to see your tired ass. You know what I mean? You think you're doing something because you in Thailand. Bitch, you, you are, ain't nothing but a tired ass hoe. They went to another uh, country, nigga. I don't want to meet you. I don't want to fight you. I don't want you, I don't want to put my hands on you. Nigga, I don't even want to know you. I don't want to know your broke ass. You're broke. You will never been. You will never be anything. Everything you did never worked. You tried to sell work. That didn't work. You tried to send work. That didn't work. You even tried to work one time. That didn't work. Man, you a, man, you a failure in life. You a failure, my nigga. You ain't nothing but a miserable. You a miserable. You a sad excuse of a black woman, nigga. You know what I mean? No, I don't want to make no videos and put your name in the title to help you get uh, views and subs and shit. No, nah, bitch. I'm going to continue to watch you struggle. You know? And you thought that by saying you had ladyboys that that would just, you know, spiral. That that would make you go viral and... You know what I mean? Everybody would just basically like, who is this new nigga? And no, no, now you just look like the, a tired ass homosexual in Thailand. It ain't grew your platform. You ain't made no money. You ain't sit up there. You you think that you was going to be probably the hottest thing smoking. No, nah, bitch, you still wearing dingy ass jerseys and shit and looking tired as a motherfucker. You understand me in Thailand, ho? You know what I mean? And that's just how you're going to die, bitch. You're going to die in one of them FUBU jerseys. They're going to bury you in that bitch. You're going to die in a, a stanky-ass Derrick Coleman FUBU jersey, bitch. You're going to die in them motherfuckers. How he die in a Derrick Coleman FUBU jersey with Dada Supremes on, with Paco, short, with Paco Jean shorts on? You know what I mean? Like a tired-ass hoe? Yeah, talking about some you want to fight somebody. Man, if you don't sit your tired ass down. But again, man, you know, man, just want, just want to sit up there and talk my shit, man. That, you know, just talk my shit. All right, man, moving on, moving on, moving on. But yeah, man, to that 50 cent in this uh, Marquis situation, I know some of y'all not going to agree with me because I see all y'all crying all in the comments saying, <laughs> oh my God, 50 don't want to be a... Why you don't want to be a father to your son? <laughs> man, don't nobody want to be no father to that mark-ass nigga. Man, that nigga a bitch. And I don't care who unsubscribed. If my son was a bitch like that, I wouldn't be no father to that nigga. Hell no. I'm going to sit up there and pay what I need to pay or whatever. But I ain't about to sit up there and fuck with that little nigga like that. He taking pictures and shit. With niggas that tried to sit up there and kill me. Hell, man, you got me fucked up. I sit up there and look up. And you taking pictures with the son of the man that tried to get me out of there. Man, fuck that little nigga. <laughs> Talking about he looked just like you. Man, I'm an ugly ass. If I'm 50 Cent, I'm going to be like, man, I'm an ugly ass nigga. You know how many ugly ass niggas look like me? You know how many uh, bitches and niggas look like 50 Cent? Come on, man. You can go to the west side of Chicago. It's a few bitches looking like 50 Cent. Man, knock it off. Said that shit like it was special. He looked just like him. Man, so many people that look like 50. Knock that shit off, man. You know what I mean? I, I don't condone that. Oh, my God. You know, it don't matter what. I, I don't like what, what is up with y'all. It don't matter what he's do. It don't matter what he said. He's still your son. Man, that nigga, two, that nigga five years from being 30. That nigga five years from being 30, man. Talking about, and I ain't going to lie, I died laughing. You know what I mean? When 50 uh, trolled his ass, I die every time I hear Marquis say, 
I had to rebuild my life. With 6700 a month, I told Freeze, I said, from now on, I'm going to start telling hoes that. I die every time that little nigga say that dumb ass shit. I had to rebuild my life with 6700 a month. <laughs> it's the look that he give when he even say that shit. He, he genuinely means it, too. He's like, I had to rebuild my life with 6700 a month. Like, come on, man. But, again... This is what happens when you have a bitter, demonic ass bitch raising your child. I'm going to say it again. I'm, I, 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 I got to come all the way through the door. Some of y'all niggas being too nice with the subject. This is what happens when a bitter, demonic, heartless ass bitch is raising your child. Guess what he going to become? A bitter, Heartless, demonic ass bitch, just like his mama. Like mama, like son. Not like father, like son. Like mama, like son. Shout out to Marshall. Hey, bro. You know what I mean? He just like his mama. He sassy, just like his mama. He petty, just like his mama. He just like his mama. And now it's to the point where he didn't surpass his mama. It ain't just his mama no more. He's, he didn't got so sassy and so bitch made, he don't even need his mama's help no more. He didn't surpassed his mama in the spirit of bitchness. He didn't surpass his mama. You thought that his mama, no, 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 no. He didn't pass her up. He didn't pass her up. He said, mama, let me, hold on, mama, watch this. Let me show you how to do it. He then came out with a new blueprint on how to be a bitch ass nigga. Yeah, he didn't outdid his mama. His mama thought, mama thought she wrote the book. He didn't wrote the new King James. He didn't revise. He got a new revised version of, of bitch ass niggas. He then came out with a whole new translation, a whole new re revised version of bitch ass niggas. He got new books. He didn't, Mar Marquise then found the lost books of bitch ass niggas. You thought you read all of the books. No, no, no. He's bringing the lost books. He got the lost scrolls of it. This little nigga is a bitch ass nigga. I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. Want not be no father to that nigga, man. And he's sitting over there taking pictures and fucking with the enemy every time you know, 50 got into it with an enemy of his. He want to take pictures. He want to FaceTime. That's like when 50 and uh, Floyd was going at it. You know, uh, next, next thing you do, you look up, you see his bitch ass FaceTime and with Floyd and shit. You know what I mean? Like, you know, don't play these type of games. It's consequences that come with that. You can't just say, oh, I know that, you know, uh, he took a picture, you know, with the son of the man that wanted to kill you, that wanted you out of here. But you got to look past that only through God. Only through God. It's only through the power of God that you will be able to look past a situation like that and still love a person in spite of. Not just no regular nigga. That's going to take the power of God to sit up there and love that little boy. That's it. Because doing the bitch ass shit, you know what I mean? That nigga don't want to fight me, man. He want to have sex. And the answer is no. I'm not fucking with no homosexual. And don't repeat nothing else that a homosexual said in my comment section no more. You sitting up there getting my comment section repeating what that gay ass nigga said. I'm going to think you gay and I'm going to block your gay ass for repeating what his gay ass said. Sitting up there talking about, yeah, he said he said that he want to fight you. That nigga don't want to. You ain't never seen that nigga fight nobody. You know what I mean? You must be one of them light-skinned niggas that think every dark-skinned nigga is tough. Every nigga that look a fool is tough. Every nigga that's musty and dingy is tough. No, nah, he just dingy. You know, you think every nigga that look like he's struggling, that been through the struggle is with the business. No, nah, he just broke. No, nah, he ain't with the business. He just broke and ugly. That's all. But again, you know, this just show you, again, mentally responding 
and emotionally react and seeing how does it work with this one. Um, you know the 50 used to pay over a half a million dollars a year in child support. I'm going to say that again because you got different individuals that's been calling 50 Cent uh, uh, a dad be dad. And my question is, how are you a dad be dad when you pay, you, you was actually paying over $500,000 every year in child support? Do you hear what I'm saying to you? How are you a dad? How is he a dad be dad for paying over $500,000 in child support? And the only reason why it went from over, uh, you know, $500,000 uh, to 6700 is because, you know, the mother, his mother, with her greedy ass, you know, decided that, that she wanted more money. And when she took her greedy ass to court to endeavor to get more money, she ended up coming off of... Uh, you know, over $500,000 a year to now having like 81000 a year. So if anything, he shouldn't be blaming his father. He should be looking at his mama because your mama messed up a over $500,000 a year lick to 6700 a month. That's not something you look at your father for. You should be looking at your mama. Your mama fucked that up. See, when you raise, and, I, and this is what I want to, I'm coming to. When you raised by a bitch only, nines out of 10, it's hard for niggas that's raised by, you know, uh, a broad alone. It's hard for them to hold a bitch to accountability. Did you hear what I said? Most of you are raised by females. I'm not going to disrespect women, so I ain't going to say a woman. But most of you are raised by single females who never fulfilled the position of a woman. They never did what was vital to the title of a woman. They never did the things that was vital to the title of a mother. They were just the gender. Most of you are raised just by the gender, a female. So by you being raised by a female only, will have no father, no, you know, never really uh, was around good representation to exemplify what a man is to you. You know, you never knew what a man was. So you emotionally react just like your mama, because that's your only point of reference is your mama. So, again, you know, uh, by him having only his mother as his, the teacher, the first teacher and the only teacher, it's not a surprise to me that he's not holding his mama accountable. He going to grow up just to be just like you niggas. You want to hold every nigga accountable. You want to go against every nigga, but it's hard for you to hold the bitch accountable, though. I'm trying to think of that bitch right now that work at uh, 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 ESPN. What's her name? She was uh, going back and forth with um, Stephen A. Smith. Then she even went back and forth with Kendra... Uh, Kendra uh, yeah, uh, Kendrick Perkins. Yeah, Andrews. You know, anytime somebody try to hold somebody accountable, you know, here you come. You know, Malika Andrews, yeah. So, you know, anytime, you know, you try to hold a bitch accountable, that's one thing about the uh, females, though. They gonna stick up for one another. And the guys that was raised by females only, you know what I mean, man, if you try to hold a bitch accountable, they're going to jump over the table. They're going to fly over the table. Like imagine you walking with accountability in your hand and you about to give it to a bitch. These niggas will jump over the table. They will jump over trucks. They will leap over walls to make sure that the accountability does not make it to the bitch. <laughs> Just imagine that you walking with accountability in your hand and you about to hand it to the bitch. These mama raised ass niggas, these female, these single female raised ass niggas, 
These male Jezebel ass niggas is going to jump over the table. They're going to leap over a wall just so you can't hold, you can't give the bitch any accountability. They don't have no, like, when it comes to giving a man any type of account accountability, they all for it. But oh my God, when it comes to giving the bitch any type of accountability, whoo, it hurts them. It hurts them so much. They cry at the thought of a bitch having accountability. Just the thought of that. Some of you niggas, your eyes is watering right now. You know? But again, you know, um, his mama messed that up. And now his mama has been, you know, uh, talking down. And, and I want you, uh, you females that profess to be women to listen to. This. That's one thing I can appreciate about Marita and Mayberry, my mother. My mother never spoke down on my father. And one time when I tried to speak down on my father to my mother, you know what my mother, did? my mother did? Pop me in my damn mouth. And I was so upset because I couldn't understand why would she pop me in my mouth and he's not here. He's not doing anything. He doing what he want to do. He in the streets. But she popped me in my damn mouth and she said, that's still your father. Don't you ever get out of place. Don't you ever put your mouth on your father. The scripture still, the scripture still says, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be prolonged on the earth. It says father first, son. You know, popped my ass in my mouth and told me that that is still your father. Matter of fact, she might as well have said the same thing that Sepulveda the Prince just said. Relax, little homie. You know? <laughs> you know? Okay, man. Appreciate the 20. Good looking. Appreciate that, fam. You know? Pop me right in my mouth. Said, relax, little homie. That's, that's still your daddy. That's still your father. Don't you ever try to bad mouth. Don't you ever get disrespectful. So I appreciate my mother for that. She's never spoken down. She's never been one of those, your daddy wasn't shit and your daddy woo-woo and your dad, no. You know, never spoke down on the man, never allowed me to speak down on the man, never put him on child support, none of that. You know what I mean? I'm just keeping it all the way 100. Hold on, let me do this. Bam, there we go. Um, you know, she never did that. And I'm appreciative for that, man. You know, 100. And so for the females that's actually listening, you know, right now, do not ever speak down, you know what I mean, on the father of your child to your child, to your children. Because we see what the, we see what the outcome of that is. We see what that come to. So you need to leave that alone. Whatever you feeling, if you need to vent, go vent to one of your little friends or something. Stop speaking to your son and your daughter like they're adults. That's one, some of you females' problem. Y'all be talking to children like they're adults and shit. You be venting to children like he a grown, this, little, this still a little ass boy or this a, a damn teenager and you venting to this child, you know what I mean, like they're damn grown up and shit. Something wrong with you. And you ain't doing nothing but fucking up that little boy's head about his father. You are being used by the devil. Stop it. But again, man, I'm in total agreeance. Agreeance, uh, you know, with 50, unless God do something uh, miraculous, uh, may the will of God be done pertaining to that situation. Because honestly, I don't think the boy is sincere. I think that he's pulling a whole bunch of moves uh, to get a lot of attention, to get a lot of clout. I don't think that he genuinely wants to, uh, his father to be in his life. I think he just wants some money, me personally. And so, you know, shout out to uh, 50. I know that a lot of the women ain't going to agree, but yeah, I'm just keeping that shit all the way 100, man. You know what I mean? Uh, no, I wouldn't, uh, unless God, you know, speaking until God do something, uh-uh, too much disrespect. Too much disrespect. All right, moving on, man. Moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. 
Let's get to it. Now, let me see. There we go. I know some of y'all been waiting. They're like, what are you going to say about Ye? What are you going to say about Kanye? First of all, before I get into this, y'all already know I love the city of Chicago. And you know the era that I come from. And like I told you, man, I remember a beautiful time in Chicago where everybody was being inspired to produce, inspired to rap, sing, you know, and um, part of that was a big part of that was because of Kanye. And a lot of the music that I heard, you didn't get a chance to hear because by me being in the city, it was so many mixtapes and shit just dropping, man. And so many beats that was coming out, shit that never made it to no album, man. You know, it was just so many tracks and we would just hear so many things that Kanye did. And it was like, wow. You know? And so, you know, we always, you know, love uh, Kanye uh, for that, man. We do. But let's get to it, man. Now that I got all that shit out the way, let's talk about it. Okay, first, let me say this before I say anything. Hey, man, that shit was funny as hell. Uh, Charlemagne gay ass talking about Kanye called his phone, talking about some, you know, you're not going to help me? You're not going to help me? You know what I mean? Pete's fucking my wife with a 10-inch dick, and you're not going to do nothing about it? Hey, I don't know if it's true. <laughs> I wasn't on the phone, but I just got to be all the way 100, man. That shit funny as hell. You, this man is fucking my wife with a 10-inch dick, and you just going to let this shit go down? <laughs> Listen, I love Kanye, but it's just certain behavior, man. I can't condone no matter who you are. That shit that he just did uh, uh, with ASAP, ASAP uh, Rocky, you know, talking about some he fucking this girl and all of this type of shit. You know, gay, lame, just completely lame. But, of course, with Charlemagne, with him just screaming all on the phone, man, he fucking my, he's fucking Kim with a 10-inch dick, man. Help. Yes, I can't lie. That's funny. Another thing that was funny, before I get to the subject, you know what I mean? When Kim was sitting over there playing DMX, uh, what these niggas really want from a, what they really want from a nigga, I can't lie. This, this, this shit just look crazy. Kim Kardashian riding around playing DMX, uh, what they really want from a nigga. It get, it just got Kanye out here looking, looking crazy out here in these streets. <laughs> one minute, one minute you dissing me, one minute I got, I won't let you see your kids, one minute you want to be my husband again, you want to be back together. You know what I mean? The bitch put on DMX what they really want from a nigga. <laughs> oh, shit. You know, just stupid. But look, before I get to some of the comments that Kanye said, let me get to the first comment that Kanye said. Let me get to, to the George Floyd uh, comments. Ain't no getting around that. Now, I understand that individuals are saying, you know, they might have produced some new evidence that, you know, what I mean, it was uh, some substance, drugs, whatever uh, 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 that was found within the system. And he might not have died, you know, what I mean, from uh, a knee being on his neck. Uh, first of all, you stupid motherfuckers. He had his knee on that man's neck. You know what I mean? For I, I, I don't know how, exactly how long, but it was a good while. So no matter what was in his system, you know what I mean? Him, dude having them knee, his knee on that nigga's neck, if, he, if I'm already saying that I can't breathe, bitch, and a motherfucker got their knee on my neck, uh, what you think that do? If I'm already struggling to breathe, if I'm already telling you that I can't breathe, and you put your knee on my neck, what do you think, you understand me, uh, that that's going to do. And let me, almost, and let me, and let me also say this. It's no, I know that y'all like Kanye is such a genius. See, when you become a billionaire, everybody want to suck your dick. Everybody want to hold your balls. And it's to the point where you can't do no wrong. 
They love your music and they love the fact that you're a billionaire and you're so powerful uh, to the point where you can just say and do anything and everybody just like, just say, oh my God, this is genius. This was not genius. This was dumb. This was a, it's no way of getting around it. This was dumb. But I understand where it's coming from. Now, of course, some of y'all not going to agree with me, but I'm just showing you my mind and my thoughts. The reason why I think he said that is because he's sitting over there fucking Candace Owens. And because he got his head and dick, you know what I mean, all up Candace Owens pussy right now, he's being influenced to repeat some of her talking points. Because when I seen him even in the interview saying some of the things that he was saying, he kind of reminded me of R. Kelly in the interview that R. Kelly had with uh, Gail King. And I'm not going to go too into it. I'm not going to say too much. But just like R. Kelly was uh, kind of trying to uh, repeat the talking points and vocabulary words of somebody that I'm not going to mention, that's pretty much what Kanye was doing in that damn interview. Kanye was sitting over there repeating certain things that he had heard Candace say. And, you know, I think because they fucking, you know what I mean? And, you know, she in his ear, you know what I mean? Uh, he repeated certain things that Candace said to him as if the shit was smart. See, Kanye is like a sponge. Whatever environment he's around, whoever he's around, that's the energy that he's going to bring at that time. If he's around people that's joyful and loving and, you know, and the vibration is high, that's, the, that's what he's going to give you because that's what he's around. That's how he feels at that time. But if he get around, you know what I mean, if he's feeling melancholy, he's feeling like, you know, because that's what it is. He, he, you know, he going through what he's going through right now. And so he's speaking from an emotional place, not understanding the power of his platform. When you Kanye West and you have the platform that you have, you can't just say anything. You can't just say that, yeah, uh, you know, it wasn't the knee of the officer, you know what I mean, that killed uh, George Floyd. No, nah, that, that, that wasn't it. No, nah, you know, uh, he died. You know, he was already high and. Let me just say, that. how does that benefit you? And how does that benefit black people? How does that benefit his family? You saying this. How did that benefit Floyd's family? How does that benefit you? Did it bring more millions? Did it bring more billions for you to say this? You know, how, how like, what was the point of saying that? People got to stop sucking dick to the point where everything that come out of Kanye's mouth, oh my God, woo, he got cold strategy. Woo, he coming with it on that. No, he don't. Sometimes Kanye just be talking. And because you guys are caught up in the spirit of idolatry, you think that a lot of the shit that he be saying is profound. And sometimes it is. But sometimes he's just talking. Or sometimes he's repeating somebody else's talking points that he thought that was intelligent, you know? But again, you know, moving on, man. Uh, but I just want to tell you this, and I know this, a lot of y'all not going to agree with what I'm about to say. But what Kanye is going through right now, this is what happens when you disrespect pimping. I know you square is about to walk out the door. God bless you. But this is what happens when you disrespect pimping. Sim, what are you saying? Oh, they might destroy the channel. They might do whatever what I'm, what I'm about to say now. But, you know, I've been told y'all that black people. Now, we know pimping is pimping, hoeing is hoeing. But I'm telling you that the game, repeating the same thing my brother told you, the game is so much bigger than pimps and hoes. But I'm showing you that. And everywhere you go, pimping and hoeing is omnipresent. Black people are hoes. 
And we see who the pimp is. I know where I'm, uh, I know some of y'all are like, huh? Yeah, black people are hoes. Listen to what I'm saying to you. Hoes. We see who the pimpin' is. P, what you mean by that? See how hoes can disrespect one another? In my lifestyle, hoes are able to call each other bitches and disrespect one another and fight one another. You're not going to see pimps sitting over there disrespecting themselves or, or breaking fingernails and shit like that to get in between, you know, hoes fighting and disrespecting one another. Why? Because it's just some hoes fighting, verbally disrespecting one another. It's hoes doing ho shit. Pimps don't get into hoes doing ho shit. Only time a hoe get checked and put back in pocket is when pimping get disrespected. So they don't give a fuck about hoes, black people, making music, disrespecting one another. Getting on YouTube, making videos, minimizing one another. Uh, going to grave sites and, you know, uh, promoting drill music and all that. They can give a lovely fuck. But the moment one of you black motherfuckers, one, the moment one of you hoes disrespect pimping, that's when you got to be put in pocket. That's when you got to get checked because you just disrespected pimping. P, what you saying? You see how he was able to say that slavery was a choice. All y'all was mad. Every black person in America you know what I mean? Was sitting over there cussing out Kanye. Oh, Kanye ain't this, Kanye ain't that. But notice how every Jewish person, every white person maintained business with him. He didn't lose no business deals when he said that. Name one motherfucking time when Kanye lost a business deal or lost anything saying anything disrespectful to black people. You know why he was able to maintain everything and keep flourishing? Because it was just hoes disrespecting hoes. It was just ho shit. But see, the moment that he decided to put his mouth, you know what I mean, on the pimping and disrespect the pimping, oh, bitch, you out of line, ho. Fuck wrong with this bitch. This bitch think just because we allowed her to become a goddamn billionaire and, 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 and act as if, you know what I mean, she one of us. This bitch starting to think like she one of us. Yeah, this bitch didn't really lost her motherfucking mind around this motherfucker, man. She out of pocket. And what happens in the game when hoes sit up there, you understand me, and disrespect pimping? They get checked. You acting like you're, oh, you a renegade? Oh, you renegade and you don't want, oh, you don't want no pimping? Guess what happens? You're not able to work this track no more. You ain't able to work. You lose work. You lose money. Motherfuckers know in the streets when a hoe ain't fucking with pimping, you know what I mean? She's not going to able, she's not going to be able to catch that date. She's not going to be able to get in that car. She's not going to be able to sit up there and work this corner, work around him. Why? Because she ain't fucking with pimping. She disrespected pimping. Every time pimping see her, I'm going to sit up there and, and chop your ass. I'm going to disrespect you. I'm going to whoop your I'm going to sit up there and cut off any type of money that you can try to make because you disrespected pimping. I know what I'm saying to a lot of y'all. It's like, what? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. But, okay. When Kanye first started in the fashion shit, some of y'all remember uh, the, uh, 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 um, Sway, Sway in the Morning. You see how passionate Kanye was in getting in the fashion business. I mean, wanted to get in the fashion industry. 
Yeah, with the fashion bit. Um, he was so passionate. You know what I mean? He was really, but just like many of you, just like a lot of you hoes, you want to do something, but you don't have the game to do it. So because you don't have the game to do it, guess what you compelled to do? You got to choose up with pimping. Why? Because you ain't got the game. So somebody might say, why Kanye chose up with them Jewish people? Why he allowed them Jewish people to start pimping on him and mashing on him? He ain't had the game. He had to. When you don't have the game, how you going to move? That's just like a lot of you squares when you say, she got the pussy, pussy sell its own self. She don't need no pimp. Woo, woo, woo. But how you going to do anything when you don't got the game? So even though Kanye had made a name for himself as a rapper, he didn't have no game on how to move and how to be successful in the fashion industry. So he had to choose up with the pimping. He had to choose up with them same Jews that he's speaking against now. He had to sit up there and choose up. Oh my God, I'm teaching right now. I don't need no... No, no goofy shit right now. Bitch, just listen. You know, she had to, he had to choose up. He did not have knowledge of that. And you talking about he is game. Well, bitch, if he has so much motherfucking game, then why the fuck did he just admit that Sway had the answers all the time? What is he admitting? I was wrong. A lot of shit that I paid them to do a lot of deals that I made with them people to do for me. Damn, I could have did this by myself, but why I couldn't do it? Cause I didn't have the game. He didn't have the game. Sway was right all the time. Sway did have the answers. He admitted he was wrong. So what does that mean? He did not have the game. When you don't have the game, you're going to move ignorantly. Why is R. Kelly in the situation that he had uh, that he's in now because he didn't have the game. Why he had to sign all of them deals? Why are Jews uh, reaping more benefits off of the masters of R. Kelly's music than he is? Because he ain't had the game. He hold for oh, he gave up some good hoeing for over thirty motherfucking years, and now the motherfucking Jews is getting ready to get paid, and his they children and children's children and children's children gonna reap off the benefits of R. Kelly's hoeing for over thirty goddamn years. And even after R. Kelly died, they still gonna sit up there and pimp off the hoeing. You understand me? That he left behind. Yeah. So listen. You know, certain gameless individuals, if you just listen, you might learn something. But when you don't have the game, you forced to choose up. You know, and during that time, just like many hoes, when they get into the game, they choose up on the wrong individuals. They get involved with the wrong individuals because they moving in ignorance. You know, and sometimes when you choose up with the wrong individuals, you know what I mean? Man, it's going to leave a nasty taste in your mouth about the game because of the bad representation that you decided to fuck with in the game. And that's pretty much what we're seeing, you know what I mean, uh, with Kanye. But hold on. Um, hold on. Let me get these comments back up so I can see y'all comment. There we go. There we go. Okay, now I can see. But yeah, man, when he was talking about the Jewish media and all of that type of shit like that, you know what I mean? What is he saying? You know what I mean? The pimps is in control, man. When a hoe get out of bounds or she blow up or she chews up, you know what I mean? When pimping talking amongst each other, hey, man, what happened to that little bitch that was uh fucking with you that was paying? Oh, man, yeah, man. You know, that bitch sat up there, man, and she done did this and did Yeah, that bitch crazy, man. You know? And what the game gonna believe? What the pimps gonna believe? What the hoes gonna believe about that hoe? That she crazy? Why? Because the pimpin' says she crazy. 
Whatever the pimpin' say about a hoe, everybody gonna believe. And y'all know I'm telling the truth because certain niggas didn't put snitch jackets on bitches that didn't even deserve to be there. But we believe that them bitches were snitches. Why? Because pimpin' said she was. So if the pimpin' say that the hoe crazy, guess what all the pimps and hoes gonna believe? That the hoe crazy? So what am I saying? The Jewish, uh, everybody basically, because they control, you know what I mean, Jewish media, the narrative about Kanye is what? He crazy. He don't know what he talking about. He losing his mind. You know what I mean? That's the narrative that's being put out. They got him looking crazy. They'll watch 60 minutes, 120 minutes, 180 minutes, and they'll take two and three minutes and, uh, and edit the video and put a false narrative on their own uh a uh, 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 shade room, all the rest of these little platforms on social media that will have Kanye just looking crazy and missed all of his talking points. All his talking points, you know what I mean, was ignored. All his talking points, you know what I mean, was never, you know, acknowledged. All his talking points. You have to watch, you would actually have to watch the damn interview like, damn, Kanye actually made sense there. Damn, Kanye actually said something powerful there. Damn, Kanye actually said something meaningful here. But you'll never hear that. You'll never see that with, you know, the two minute and three minute clips that they putting out there to make them look crazy. They're in control. You talking about some, he's a billionaire. You little silly bitch. You don't understand what I'm saying? To, like, how can people be so... Well, I understand. You know, just like Kanye say, how could you be so heartless? How could you be so gameless? Hey, watch this. Him being a billionaire is only impressive to hoes. <laughs> Let me come out with this shit, man. That shit is impressive to hoes. It's almost like when a renegade come up on the Benz or a Lexus, you know, renegades would be like, that's right, girl. And you did that without a pimp. Girl, you independent. Yes, bitch. Yes, yes. That bitch, are bitches are so stupid and so stubborn. A bitch will agree to pay $1,500 a month to be in a, a 2008 CLK Benz but because she got the caption, you know what I mean? Self-made, self-paid, without a pimp. I did it without a pimp, underscore. I'm that bitch, underscore. God did, underscore. I did, underscore. Renegade, having it my way, underscore. 304, no 16. And she putting all of that shit in the caption. You will have a, a, a whole legion of renegades supporting her. Like, girl, we see you, girl. Yes. But in the eyes of the pimping, a behind the year C.O.K. Benz, bitch, that ain't nothing to be posting on your Facebook or Instagram, you know what I mean, shouting about. Okay, that's cool that you got a car, but so what? But it means something to hoes, though. You get what I'm saying? I'm not trying to minimize, you know, Kanye's accomplishments, but it's nothing in comparison to what the pimps got going on. It only means something to you. Why? Because you a hoe. And you think like a hoe. You know what I mean? It only means something to you. Because you a hoe. And you think like a hoe. So when Kanye became a billionaire, you know, uh, of course, to you, it was like, whoo, yeah, whoo. And that's, and that's cool. Most of you felt just like Tyrese felt when Dr. Dre became a billionaire and started crip walking. Look how hoes act. But you didn't see, uh, 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 what's the Jewish dude? What's the Jewish dude that Dr. Dre always fucking with? Come on, his main guy, the guy that took care of him, the guy that put him back on his feet, Interscope, come on. Hurry up. You didn't see him crip walking. 
Jimmy Iovine. Thank you. So you didn't see Jim, Jimmy Iovine or none of his people crip walking and, and doing all of that shit. Why? Because pimps conduct themselves. And of course, they're not actual pimps. But I'm giving you, like in a metaphor, making you see, just giving you the understanding that everything is pimping and hoeing. But see how, you know, to them, in their mindset, I'm having what I'm supposed to have. I'm doing what I'm supposed to I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. What is it left for me to do? Go get more billions. Create a legacy that my children's 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 children, children's children can reap off of. I'm pimping for real. You know? Of course, to hoes, uh, uh, that which is nothing to a pimp is everything to a hoe. So, of course, to hoes, Kanye is a god. It's like, woo, look at all of that power Kanye has. But to real pimps, to the ones that have, you know, way more power than Kanye, they looking at him just like a, just like you. A regular nigga, a regular hoe that has the potential to do some pimping. And that's what they're afraid of because he's thinking out of the mindset of a hoe. And that's dangerous. He's already disrespecting pimping and he's all he's showing that he has the capability and he has the mindset. You know what I mean? That man to be something. Man, to actually think outside, you know what I mean, of a common hoe, the common hoe uh, mentality. And that's dangerous. That's dangerous. So, of course, they're going to make him appear to be crazy. And you're going to think that he is crazy because you don't even understand what the fuck he's saying. The average nigga, the average bitch, you know what I mean? The shit that Kanye said, they like, man, uh, you know, what, what is he talking about? What is this? And then, of course, by him being emotional because of what's happening with Kim and the children, he's not our, and he's not the most articulate person. When he speaks, all his talking points is just everywhere. You know, something, something over here, something over there, something over here. So it's not well put together. You know what I mean? Come on, man, you, you, you're doing too much. You know, like, damn. I'm doing my best not to, not to block you, bitch. Just speaking the vernacular of silence right now, you know what I mean, while I'm teaching. Maybe another time when I open up the phone lines, you know what I mean, you can speak your views. And the, but right now, bitch, I'm coming through. Goddamn. I done kind of gave you, I, I done did the biggie with you, bitch. I done gave you warning. Goddamn. Um, but again, you know the it's like this. Whenever, you know what I mean, we see any nigga that has, you know, any potential to do any type of pimping, he's dangerous. He's dangerous. Now, I will admit, yeah, at times he do say some stupid shit. He do. He say a lot of stupid shit. But at times he says a lot of shit that's meaningful. He does. But media is going to make him look like he's crazy when he's not. Hold on for a minute. Let me put this right there. I keep, I told you, these the damn iPhones. There we go. But, you know, look at, look at the situation between him and Meek Mills, you know what I mean, and uh, Puffy and all the rest of them. Look at what he was telling you when he was saying that, you know, uh, yeah, man, you know what I mean? Uh, Meek only saying something because they sent him. Listen to the words that he's using. He was sent. 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 What is he saying? Meek Mills is a hoe. Do you understand what he said? He's a hoe. Yeah, he's a gangster rapper to, to, to the gameless, but he's a hoe. That was sent, you understand me, by, hold on, there we go. You know what I mean? Uh, the pimping, who the pimping? The Jewish people. Or the people that y'all think is uh, Jewish people. How should I say that? 
Yeah, that's better put. You know, he being sent, he just doing what daddy told him to do. And anytime that you disrespect daddy, anytime that you disrespect pimping, watch all the hoes come together to speak against you. Watch all the hoes, you know, come on one accord to say that you crazy. Watch all the hoes uh, come on one accord to say that you losing it. Watch all the hoes come together to make jokes and, and, and shit like that. That's what's happening. No, I don't think that. Uh, and I told you that crazy ain't nothing but another word. You know, uh, you define crazy as, you know, misunderstood. Whenever you misunderstood, people going to say you crazy. So if, you know, he's having some experiences and he's trying to convey that and by him not being the most articulate individual, it just come out, you know, like, damn, what did he just say? A damn, like, huh? Damn, that didn't sound right. You know what I mean? And then it's so easy for individuals to take his words and then just cut it up and then give a false narrative to have him looking more crazy. <laughs> But no, I don't think that the brother is crazy, you know, at all. No, I know exactly uh, what he's saying. See, Kanye thought that he was going to be treated differently because he put 140. He like, man, I put 140 million in it. Listen, they treated Kanye the same way that Trophy treated the hoe. You understand me? When she came to him arrogant, with that little tiny ass $1,700, nigga. The Jewish people said, the pimps sat up there and treated Kanye the same way the trophy treated that hoe when he threw the 1700 in the fireplace. Those that remember the story, but yeah, my partner trophy had a hoe that was trying to be arrogant. She was an arrogant chop. And she was calling herself being arrogant with him and talking crazy and shit like that. He was like, bitch, the fuck? Bitch, fuck you and your goddamn money. man. He took that little 1700 man and threw that shit in the, fi the fucking fireplace. Bitch, dismiss yourself. The fuck out of my presence. That's how they shitted on that little 140 million. See, 140 million, just like now, when I say 1,700, a lot of y'all about you being broke, you like, damn, man, he threw 1,700 in the fireplace? Yeah, that's just how the Jews looked at that 140 uh, million. See, the way you like, man, I wouldn't have threw no 1,700, you know what I mean, in no fireplace. Or you said, damn, I wouldn't have let no uh, client go that put $140 million in our bank. Man, pfft. By the Jewish people having the mindset of pimps, they was like, nigga, fuck that little 140 million, nigga. Fuck you, ho. Disrespecting pimping, nigga. We was cool with you when you was disrespectful to other hoes and shit and going through what you was going through with Kim, but now you disrespecting pimping, bitch. Take this 140. You got, matter of fact, ho, we're going to give you a few days and shit, bitch. You got a month before you take this little 140 million dollars and go about your business. Yeah, you're going to have to find another bank to fuck with, bitch, because we ain't fucking with you. See how they got out? Did you hear what I just said? They treated, they treated that little $140 million the same way the trophy set up there and treated that $1,700. They, what they said? They threw that nigga to the fireplace. Your money... And the popularity of you being Kanye is not bigger than what we stand for. That's what Kanye meant when he said, man, I'm jealous of them. I'm jealous of their love for one another. I'm jealous that they don't have music promoting genocide. They don't have music, you know what I mean, that sit up there and promote us killing each other. They don't have music that say, oh, I'm fucking your bitch. They don't have that. I'm jealous of the way they treat one another. I'm, I'm jealous of the way they pull one, uh, each another, uh, uh, grab one by the hand and pulling each other up. I'm jealous of that. That's what he meant by that. 
I'm jealous that they official and beneficial to one another, man. They got love for one another. They replenish one another. We just be finished with one another. It's a difference. I'm jealous. I'm jealous of the fact that, you know what I mean, they actually respect one another. They honor one another. They have admiration. You know, we don't. We don't. So when he said that, I'm in total agreement. I knew exactly what the brother uh, brother was saying. And he thought, again, Kanye thought that he would be treated a certain way because of the amount of money that he had. No, they have to remind him that you're still a hoe. We will have, and matter of fact, you so much of a hoe, you know what I mean? We're uh, we going to make you cry, you know what I mean, some more. Because, see, that's the one thing with Kanye. He's knowledgeable, but he's a, still a rival gang member of wisdom. Some of that is going to go over some of y'all here. Kanye is a knowledgeable individual, but he's a rival gang member of another gang called Wisdom. He's not a wise individual. He's a knowledgeable individual about certain things, but he's not a wise individual. You know, he's going to emotionally react before mentally responding. And that's always going to be, you know what I mean, man, that's always, always going to be severe to him. He puts his heart on his shoulder. So Kim and other people will always be able to take advantage of him, you know, because of them emotions is showing. So, yeah, he might say some things that's powerful and meaningful, you know, here and there. But by, you know, being able to take uh, them, them, them feelings. Hold on. I'll do his big brother, Jay. Man, you guys are so lost in the sauce. Jay-Z a hoe too. See, you're not, you missing what I'm saying. I'm giving you this game. I'm giving you the, the, exactly the way that they see us. Look up to his big brother. Nigga, he, you talking about a, a, another hoe. Jay-Z a hoe too. We talking about the big leagues. We not talking about the minor leagues with, with me and other pimps and hoes. No, we talking about the major leagues on a whole nother dimension. They see Jay-Z as a hoe too. You see Jay-Z like that. You see Kanye like that. But they just see him as regular hoes. That's what I'm showing you. You see him as hoes and, you know, like, whoo, man. You know, man, he that dude. No. He just another hoe. And, 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 and guess what? He'll play to the beat of their drum, too. They all do. Kanye is trying to basically break free of that. And the other hoes are saying, daddy been so good to us, and daddy been pimping on us so good, why would you ever want to leave his pimping? Why would you want to leave daddy's pimping? Why would you want to leave the family? Is he not the top one? He not the top one. What do you mean he not the top one? Man, you talk, I, mean, I can't even respond to your comments no more. They all hoes. <laughs> Goofball. They all hoes. You trying to exalt one hoe over the other. That's whole, that's, that's whole vision. <laughs> oh, my God. That's just how hoes think. She mad because she ain't the top bitch. You know what I mean? She want to be the bottom bitch. You know what I mean? You, you thinking like a hoe. That's hoe shit. Jay-Z's, <laughs> you trying to exalt, have praise and worship service for Jay. Man, knock it off. Jay be marching to the beat of them, uh, uh, they drum too. He ain't no different. Kanye just, you know, he just more outspoken, you know, about the situation. He want to break free of it. He want to do some pimping. And the real pimps is looking like, bitch, no. You know what I mean? That's what it, but you trying to have praise. Man, hell no. 
in history that played Pippen and but but did it cost him? No, 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 no. That ain't a good example. I ain't even trying to do that. Suge locked up. I don't even want to speak on Suge, but God bless him. Terrible example. You know what I mean? Cool in a sense, but in totality, no. Uh-uh. No. I know that was the image that that see, he was that to hoes, but not to the pimping. What am I saying to you? He knew who to pull that with. If he would have pulled that with the right pimps, his ass would have been in prison. Don't believe the hype. Yeah, always like I told you, as long as hoes disrespect hoes, everything is cool. But when you disrespect pimping, that's when everything get fucked up. I don't even think R. Kelly is sitting in jail because of young girls. I think that he disrespected Pimpin. I think he disrespected somebody at Sony. I think he disrespected somebody in the higher ups that he had no business disrespecting. And I think that all of this shit is a smoke screen. And I think y'all uh, falling for this shit when this shit been going on. Wasn't nobody crying about it then. You know, but now all of a sudden it's wrong. Now everybody crying. Now everybody, ah! You weren't crying when the sex tape came out back then. So, no, I think he disrespected Pimpin'. Come out, he want his masters and, and all of that. They're like, no, nah, bitch, you're not getting your masters. Uh-uh. You're going to be just like the hoes that came before you. You hold good for some decades. You had a good time. We treated you good. We allowed you. See, because this is the thing. They don't mind making you appear like you that guy to hoes. It's just like the pimping, right? When we send a hoe back to her family or to, you know, where she from, you want a bitch to go back with jewelry on. You want a bitch to go back in a foreign. You want a bitch to go back in fashion designer clothes. You want a bitch to have a nice place. Everything that's big to the whole, that's small to us. You would get to a place like me. I'm 38. I'm an old nigga now. You know what I mean? I don't give a damn about no goddamn jewelry, little trinkets and shit like that. You know, that's the that's for the hoe. In her world, that's big. Wearing fashion designer clothes, jewelry, a nice car, a nice place. You know, to them hoes, man, that's everything. That's everything to them hoes. That which they think is big, that's small in the world of pimping. So, of course, you know, I don't mind that bitch, you know, going around other hoes, you know what I mean, talking about, you know, how she got this and how she got that. Why? Because it only make my pimping look good. So, what am I saying? You know, they allow, you know, uh, and that's what Kanye was saying. All of these rappers, all of these people that you see, all these so-called gay, they're owned by Jewish people. The black voice is owned, the black music, the black, it's owned by Jewish people. What is he saying? All of these hoes is getting pimped on. They get it mashed on. They can disrespect hoes, but they can't disrespect the pimping. Why? Because they being presided over. They getting mashed on. They being owned by the pimping. So they don't mind putting you in a car, a jewelry, or pushing you out there and things like that because they don't look at it as saving a hoe. They looking at it as enslaving a hoe. You know, not saving, but enslaving. So, again... You know, when he kept saying that they own the black voice, they own, you know, the culture. I know exactly what he's saying. They doing some pimping. <laughs> and all of these dudes that's being exalted as the pimp and, and the high dude and the God and all of these niggas ain't nothing but hoes. They're hoes. And what it sound like is Kanye tired of hoeing. So you thought he was free, just like that whole mindset when the bitch like, but he's a billionaire. We were, see, only, you know, small people think like, couldn't even understand what the fuck I was saying. 
Then they tell a dumbass it's anti semitic Anything about right? Listen, but watch this though, divine. Anything about them or any just the slightest disrespect, the slightest disrespect, it's it's not gonna go unpunished. It's sad how you can go to a graveyard right now and disrespect your ox. It's sad how niggas made music talking about coming to Miss Coleman's house and kicking the ashes of Lil Jojo, kicking the urn down in her house right in front of her. Niggas was like, ooh, that's hard. Ooh, that bars. Woo! Some of the most deadliest, demonic, heartless ass shit that we've said to one another. None of these videos was taken down. None of these channels was taken down. But all of a sudden, when you sit up there and just say anything, anything about this, it's, it's a problem. And just like, you know what I mean, all of the hoes, they like, man, I got to stop doing business with you. Why you got to stop doing business? Because daddy, daddy didn't like what you said. Yeah, and because daddy didn't like what you said, I can't fellowship with you no more. Daddy said, uh, you know, and, and what does that sound like, pimping and horn? Because when a bitch disrespect pimping, guess what pimping don't do? Pimping don't allow his hoes to hang around that hoe that disrespect the pimping. So what do the hoes do when you say something disrespectful or you get out of line? All the hoes separate themselves from you. Why? Because them hoes is fucking with pimping. They can't fuck with no renegade or no renegade mentality or they can't be fucking with no, no bitch talking about some she want to do some pimping. What they going to say? All the pimps going to sit up there and say, you know what I mean, man? Man, get this garbage. Get this bitch away from my bitch. You know? You didn't stop doing business with the... Oh, my God. Hey, 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 let me do this right quick. Because you keep saying dumb shit. They sit up there and cut ties. He was sitting over there glorifying uh, Balenciaga all throughout the interview. Saying they this, then they that. And now they didn't cut ties with him. And you just sitting up here just talking crazy. Like, see, this is what I'm saying. You don't want to be in the spirit of idolatry to the point when somebody is saying something that's accurate and you got your mouth on a person's balls to the point where you can't hear no truth at all. I don't never want to be in the spirit of idolatry with anyone where somebody is saying anything accurate to the point where I'm like, oh, no, no, no. And that go for me. That go for anybody. That man shit just like you shit. He pissed just like you pissed. He done made mistakes and he making more mistakes than you. You know what I mean? Come on now. God damn. Just, just, just saying anything. Just to, he, he broke up with them for... <laughs> Oh, my God. But bitches will be bitches and just say any damn thing. You know? But, again, notice that he disrespected Puffy on their platform, Revolt. He said a lot of things that could be disrespectful to black people. But they're not, them, them companies are not breaking ties with Kanye because of the statements he said about George Floyd or him disrespecting Puff or, or any of that. No. It's because, you understand me, he disrespected the pimping. That's why. And all of them hoes is getting in line. They was like, man, LeBron ain't. They was like, man, LeBron, I don't know how true that is. They like, yeah, they had some situation that was supposed to occur, and LeBron is now separating himself. Exactly. Because when you, and then Cube, you see how Cube was. Now, Cube, the big bad wolf of NWA. Cube made some of the coldest songs, you know, kicking down the dough, you know, being cold with it. He said a lot of social, political ass shit. You know, especially when he was uh, hanging around public, you know, public enemy. But when uh, uh, 
Kanye said his name. What Q uh, came out and said, yeah, hey, hey, I, I don't know why my name was even uh, mentioned. Man, don't put me in that. I don't even know why my name, you know, man, they did not want to, you know, what? what is he saying? Man, shit, man, I'm, I'm cool with daddy, man, don't, man. I just sit up there and had the, uh, what is, what is his league called? The three on three? Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, I just came out with this, man. Uh, daddy letting this go through. You know what I mean? Damn, man, you make, man, I, I had that conversation with you in private. You know how we hoes talk? See, hoes don't mind having a conversation, you know, with you in private, but they didn't mean for you to go out in public and shit and talk about the conversation that you had, you know, publicly, you know, about the shit. Hell no. Cube was like, wait a minute, hold on, nigga. <laughs> I told you that in, in, in privacy, nigga. Like, I was talking like the big bad wolf with you. Like, damn, I ain't mean for you to, to do all that. Well, hey. Remember, Kanye had even asked him, man, can you even run this interview? You know, because Mav couldn't even run my interview. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 you know, he, he couldn't even run it because daddy controls everything. Hold on. Do they did? Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Did Farrakhan took Farrakhan completely off Instagram? You don't see you don't see him uh, nowhere. Hold on. There we go. Then I remember even Kanye saying uh, in the interview, he was like, "Man, you know what I mean? They disrespect me every time they call me Kanye. I changed my name." Man, listen, whatever you change your name to, your name going to be always what they want to call you. Why can't you speak on Jay? Man, what be wrong with you? Man, man, man stop getting high or drunk or whatever. I'm, I got Kanye in the thing. Why do you want me to speak on Jay? I'm not speaking on Jay right now. I just sit up there and just spoke on him previously before. Where you been at? What's wrong with you? Get your head in the game. Jay wasn't on Drink Champs. Kanye was. What's wrong with you? Check yourself. God bless you. But again, you know what I mean? When it come to this, uh, hold on. There we go. All right. Right. You know what I mean? Coming out of nowhere. Hey, speak on Jay. Hey, speak on uh, Lil Pooh and the two bears. Uh, no. <laughs> How about I'm going to speak on, you know what I mean, what's in the title? And if other individuals, uh, you know what I mean, get mentioned, then that's what it is. But, you know, stop doing that. Hey, man. Hey, hey, speak on, speak on Benny Siegel. Like, uh, uh, no. Uh, uh, how about we don't, you know, but did you notice also, damn, see, it's all coming back to my mind now. Remember, remember uh, if you remember within the interview, uh, Nori had even said that to Kanye. See, this is how I know I'm telling the truth. Even Nori, who everybody sees, is, you know, a real dude and all that type of shit. Notice that he even said to Kanye, hey, you're going a little bit too hard. You know what I mean? Now, he said Jews, but I'm replacing it with the pimping. He said, he said, hey, man, you don't you going a little bit too hard. You know what I mean? On the Jews. You going a little bit too hard. You speaking. In other words, like, man, you disrespecting pimping. That's what all of this is. It's wrapped up into one. You can't escape this. I know you squares like he think everything just pimping and hoeing. Uh, yeah, pretty much. The spirit of pimping and hoeing is omnipresent. You can't escape this shit. No matter how you try to fix it up. You know what I'm saying? But you, Nori, you know what I mean? 304. I'm going to just call him Nori 304. Nori say, you going too hard on daddy. You 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 know you 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 going way too hard, you know speaking on daddy right now, you know like man stop this, 
And, and then Kanye, of course, approved. And, and those that watched the interview, you know I'm not lying. He told that man exactly that that word. Yeah, Nori 304. Nori 304 said, hey, man, you know, you're going too hard on daddy. In other words, bitch, you being disrespectful. You know daddy don't like that shit. And you know about what happened with certain hoes in times past when they got out of bounds with daddy. You know what I mean? Daddy do daddy can make sir, uh, make you disappear, bitch. So you need to sit up there and be happy and play along like the rest of us and march to the beat of daddy's drum like the rest of us and stop disrespecting daddy. Otherwise, you're going to end up like certain other hoes. And because you guys, hold on. There we go. And because you guys are fans of Kanye, <clears throat> some of y'all are worshipers, um, you can't see that, like, oh, man, they can't do nothing to Kanye. He's too powerful. Man, please. They'll sit up there and have a scandal. They'll bring out something so big and switch the whole narrative. You guys will go from loving Kanye to hating Kanye. They got the power to do that, and he knows that. Just like they got the power to make y'all think that he's crazy. They got the same power to make you hate Kanye the same way that individuals right now hate R. Kelly. They'll come out with some shit, some old shit. You'd be like, God damn, what, what video is this or what picture is this? Because, again... Certain things have to happen to you for you to become elite. Always remember what I told you, that the price of success is sacrifice. Sometimes that sacrifice, you know, is a righteous one. And sometimes a lot of those sacrifices are unrighteous, depending on the lifestyle that you're endeavoring to be successful in. And if you're just, uh, endeavoring to be successful in a wicked lifestyle, then nines out of 10, you're going to have to make a wicked sacrifice, a demonic sacrifice. You will not graduate. You will not obtain excellence on an elite status like that without making a demonic sacrifice. The price of success is sacrifice. And if you're in the lifestyle of carnality, especially in the music industry, you're going to have to get into a continuity of making demonic sacrifices. We don't know the sacrifices that Kanye made to reach the level that he has reached. And all I'm saying is to you that, you know, man, they can sit up there. You understand me? Celebrity worship is a definite... They sit up there, you understand me, and bring out something that, that he don't think that exists. Man, they can make it exist. They have the power to do that. And he knows that. They got the power to destroy his whole legacy. And he knows that. And because y'all have the mindset of hoes, they can convince you that two plus two is five. And you're going to agree to it. They can take Kanye's whole legacy and make you think that he's a pedophile slash homosexual. I guarantee you, they never allow the hoes to have a, and listen to what I'm saying to you in a sense. They're not going to allow you to have a successful renegade. They're not going to allow you to idolize and worship and look up you know what I mean? To a legendary renegade. No. Any black man that you've ever had, they destroyed the image of that particular man. And because you have the mindset of a hoe, it's easy for you to be like, oh my God, I, I should have knew that about that bitch. That bitch ain't, oh my God. Wow, she was doing that? <laughs> The niggas talk and move just like the bitches these days. So it's easy to convince your people to hate you, to dislike you. And one, and one of the reasons why Kanye 
feels the way he feels is because he's dealing with certain issues from childhood. And he's dealing with certain issues now. He does not feel accepted by his own people. So he knows that he don't fit in. He know the reason, the only reason why y'all fuck with him is because of the music and, and the money. But if you really knew him, knew him, knew him, you might think he a weirdo. You might think he a nerd. You might think he's peculiar. You might think he ain't shit. He know that. But he's created a persona that is bigger than life. He's created an image, you know, of a God. But in all actuality, he knows that he's far from it. If you remove the music, if you remove the money, it's just flesh, man. It's just another hoe in the eyesight of, you know, pimps. As far as the Jews, the, the Jews and the white people, you know, is concerned. But watch what I tell you. They're going to try to tarnish, diminish, and abolish, you know what I mean, everything that that man has established especially if he keep moving the way that he's moving. I wouldn't be surprised if a case come out, some, some that be like, oh, wow, Kanye, you did that? That's how they move. And they already got, you know what I mean, you guys not liking them already. And he already don't think that black people fuck with him. And so that's why, and Kanye, man, it's like, why do y'all want me to go hard fighting for black people when black people don't even fight for me? That's his whole mindset towards the people. Because the people, you know, my people, they like, man, you should help us regardless. You should do this. You should do that. You should do this with your money. You should do that with your money. You should do this and do that with your money. And, you know, whether we support you or not, whether we there for you or not, you know what I mean? You obligated to do this and do this because you reached this particular status. And Kanye like, man, where was y'all when, you know, this occurred? Where was y'all when my child got kidnapped in front of y'all? You know, where, where was everybody at that professed that they loved me then? Where was uh, the public at? Where was the black voice? Where was, uh, how did, why, why did y'all allow people to play with me like that? Talking about I'm laying in Kim's bed. You know what I mean? He think y'all supposed to be on social media like going ham over him. <laughs> oh, shit. That's why I'm telling you that he's not fit to lead. He's a very gifted artist. He's a very gifted producer. But as far as being a president or as far as being, you know, a leader of the people... No man that's governed by feelings could ever be a powerful leader for the people. Because it's too, he's too easy for the enemy to sit up there and destroy. Because he emotionally reacts. He's being led by feelings. You know, he's being led on how he feels. He's not being led on what's real. Because anybody, any man know that, you know, everything that you feel ain't real. So, no, he can't be no goddamn president, man. And, yes, you know, God used him to sit up there and say certain things and do certain things at times. But, man, he ain't fit to be no damn leader. You know what I mean? Stop it. Y'all think anybody, and that's, and that's just so sad. That show you how much of hoes we are. We expecting a, a guy to make beautiful beats to be our leader. Just look at my people, man. They think from the mindset they want a savior. They look are still looking for somebody to save them. Begging the white man for, you know, please, can we please have, can we please have reparations? Can we please have it? Can we, can we please? We speak to other nations from uh, a standpoint of weakness. As if we the weaker vessel. Kanye know that. You know, Kanye know that. Like I said, he's very knowledgeable. You know, just because a person ain't articulate, that don't mean that they're not knowledgeable. Remember who his mother was, you know. 
Father, a very knowledgeable man too. Very knowledgeable. He's just not wise, but he's a very knowledgeable, powerful, you know, mean black man. It's just that, again, being governed by feelings, he's not able to lead beyond pain. His pain is going to take him away, you know what I mean, from the message. It's going to take him away, you know what I mean, from what he said that he was lead, led to do. So, again, yeah, he has say some powerful things here and there. And he did say some very meaningful things within the interview. But you will see after he had say something meaningful, he will go right back to, you know, Kim and the kids. You know, Kim and the kids. And it's sad because Kim right now can tell him what, whatever he's doing. She could tell him to come back. She can give him orders. She could tell, she could do this. She could do this with, she could pretty much, you know, play with Kanye. It's sad, but it's true. He's weak in that area. He's a great man in so many other areas. But when it comes to the bitch, no. No. So, again, I'd be on this all day. You know what I mean? Talking about that three-hour uh, interview. Matter of fact, this might not even be my last video uh, pertaining to Kanye. But that's all I kept seeing was pimping and hoeing. You know, I just seen a hoe. I know some of y'all going to be offended, but that's that's what I that's what I seen. Some of y'all, oh, he's a billionaire. He's this and that. Listen, he's still, you know what I mean, under, uh, I know when they be telling you, I own this much of the company and I got this much and I, I got this much and I got, yeah. But he know who control media. He know who control this artist. He know who control this label. He know who control this business. And they can guess what? They not black faces. So, again, you know, um, I just sit up there and just, um, you speaking the truth. I know, I hey, I know. I just knew certain individuals wasn't going to agree with it because they love Kanye so much. I got love for Kanye, too. But I'm giving you this game on how I see it. When he was saying certain things, you know, hold on. Let me get these comments. Yeah, Kanye had told us we don't have no music promoting us being kings and queens. All we got is music promoting us, you know what I mean, killing us, you know, doing us wrong, betraying one another. We only got uh we only got music that basically, you know what I mean, provoke us to uh disrespect one another. Not, you know, respect and love and cherish and you know what I mean? Build one another up. We don't have that. You know, and he's and I just like when he said, man, I, I like, you know, what they have for one another. He know. Let me see. Let me see. Hold on. I'm trying to look at y'all comments, make sure I ain't miss nothing. Daddy Pimpin' made my NBA. And then I, can you please speak on the bigger mom, uh, midget, sir? What else statement? Hold on. No, she not pimping him. Hold on. Uh, let me make sure I ain't miss nothing. Tony said, Patreon. Mm -hmm. Noria Gray Ho, Big Teasy. A billionaire ho. Yeah, see, to you, because you only have thousands or hundreds of thousands, or maybe you might have some meal. You know, a billionaire, it's like, woo! But they don't think like that. 
You know, they think completely different of us. Just like right now, some of you, if somebody say, hey, man, let's become a billionaire. You niggas going to be like, man, fuck is that nigga on? Because you think, you, you, you know, your mindset is like, man, we can't, we can't reach that. We can't touch that. Them, because they've been raised, you know, to think a certain way. They've been think they've been, they knowledgeable of their culture. They knowledgeable, you know what I mean, of their ancestors. They're knowledgeable, you know what I mean, of their calling, their ministry, their destiny. And when you're told who you are since birth, when you're raised to believe that you're the chosen people of God, when you're raised to believe that you're the chosen royal priesthood, you know, that God basically has favoritism towards your people, they're raised to be conquerors. They're raised to have dominion. They're raised to uh, be winners. What am I saying? They're raised to do some pimping. <laughs> because all their life, when they look at the Bible, they looking at their ancestors. When you look at the Bible, you was told that, you know, that's that man and that's them and that's them. When you look at, you know, anybody that, you know, is being worshipped or, high, you know, highly exalted, you was told that that was the white man or that was the, the so-called Jewish man. You know what I mean? You, you didn't think that was you. You was raised in a church where it was a white Jesus that was 30 pounds they look like he needed a sandwich in your church. You know, you as Brother Malcolm said, you was hoodwinked. You was bamboozled. You was led astray. You know, what am I saying? You was, they, they did some beautiful pimping on your mind. You don't know your culture. Of course you don't believe in yourself. You don't even know who the fuck you are. And if you don't have no knowledge of self, then you're just the best definition of lost. So, of course, I can't love or have confidence, you know what I mean, in somebody that I don't even know. I'm a predestined failure. I come from nothing. I know nothing. The parents that you raised by, they don't know nothing. Hoes being raised by hoes. You know? That's how, that, I, I know I'm talking a little. I know some of y'all like, man, what the fuck is he saying? I know. I know. You know what I mean? The pimpin knew what I was saying. But, you know, again, pimps respect pimps. When a hoe get out of line and disrespect pimping, man, you gonna see that bitch get put right back in pocket. Think about when Nick Cannon had disrespected pimping. What happened when Nick Cannon disrespected pimping? What happened? You remember that? Nick had made Nick had made some comments that they thought that was disrespectful. And what happened to Nick? He got put in pocket. He had to apologize to the pimping. He he didn't say some disrespectful things uh, about black people. I mean, hell, he didn't disrespect it. Even some icons, he didn't disrespect it. You know what I mean? Different black artists and different black men. Man, didn't nobody give a fuck about it. But the moment that he disrespected Pimpin' though, you seen that whole apologize, didn't you? You seen that whole say, I'm sorry, daddy. You know? Yeah, bitch, I know you didn't got some money and you been on Nickelodeon and all of that. You got some good businesses and you done saved your money and everything. But, bitch, you, you got beside yourself. Yeah, you was really wilding out, huh? You forgot that you was a hoe. You start thinking that you was us. And we have to remind you, bitch. You know what I mean? Don't you ever disrespect pimping. Now, you go out in front of them and you apologize to them hoes and let them know that you will never disrespect pimping again. All right, bitch, go ahead. And you, all right, all right, wipe your tears. All right, go ahead and put on that hoe attire and go back to work. Get us some more money. Get to work, hoe. 
You know what I mean? Get to it, bitch. You know? Oh, what's going on? Oh, what's going on, P? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just a little Nick Cannon hoe, man. She had got out of bounds with us and shit like that. But, you know, the bitch apologized and shit like that. We told the bitch, go on here and get back to work. You know what I mean? Make us some more motherfucking money and shit, you know? Oh, yeah, man, yeah. You know, these every now and then, man, them hoes will get out of line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you'll give them some money. You allow them to uh get some clothes and some jewelry, a nice place, and, you know, a few little followers on Instagram. And, you know, uh, a whole start believing that shit. You know what I mean? This bitch start believing that she God. Bitch start believing that she us. Yeah, got to remind that hoe. Bitch, you done lost your motherfucking mind. You know what I mean? Why? Because pimping was disrespected. You know, you can't disrespect pimping. You know what I mean? When you a hoe. Keep that in your mind. When you a hoe. Until you sit up there and elevate, until you evolve past that, until you basically are no longer depending on the help of the pimping, until you get out of that whole mindset and come together as one to build one another up, you know what I mean, and start loving one another instead of hating one another, stop killing one another, you know what I mean, and come together as one to build us up. Because no, no enemy has to kill a nation that kills themselves. No adversary, no enemy has to kill a nation that kills itself. And we got music that uh, not only, hold on. There we go. We got music that not only encourage us to kill each other, but we got, you know what I mean, music. And we got messengers on YouTube that's promoting us being disrespectful and killers of the first teacher, which is the black woman. So, of course, you know what I mean? We go into a destination, you know what I mean, called failure. We go into a destination called nowhere fast, of course. Look at what we accept. Look at what we glorify. Look at what we magnify. The very thing that we should be mortified, we glorify to our people. So, of course, you know, as long as we keep doing this, we're going to stay in the position of a hoe. And they're going to continue to reap off the benefits of us being in their jails and prisons. They're going to reap off the benefits, you know what I mean, of our, our lives. Look at all of the hoes that be going on, you know what I mean, uh, Vlad's uh, platform. Look at all the hoes that be going on Mark's platform. You know what I mean? Telling their story and and shit like that, you know what I mean? And they don't even promote a book, no music, no nothing. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 Vlad and the rest of them, they just benefit off, they, they reap off the benefits. Now, of course, when you see No Jumper, everybody's screaming, Sharp, Sharp, Sharp. Oh, man, look how Sharp did Kelby. Look how Sharp, you know what I mean, uh, did Kelby, man. Woo! But at the same particular time, Who's presiding over no jumper? You know what I mean? Now, of course, hopefully Sharp will, you know, get on his own platform and build his own platform up so he can sit up there and do his own thing. Because, you know, bringing millions of views, you know what I mean, the no jumper, I mean, that's, that's cool and everything. But it say no jumper. It don't say Sharp. <laughs> I'll leave that alone. But, you know what I mean, again, man, you know what I mean, uh, I just want to, you know, I hope I didn't ruffle your feathers up, you know what I mean, too much. Checkmate. Yeah, I hope I, I hope I didn't say anything, you know, when I said I called your rapper or I called, uh, you know, the person that you idolizing, you know, when I, when I said that they was a hoe, I hope that you don't hate me or dislike me or want to beat my ass. All because I said that your favorite rapper, you know what I mean, is a hoe. You know, and they still hoeing, you know what I mean, for the pimping. Yeah. Hold on, let me see this. I hope, I hope, I hope that, uh, you know, one day you realize who you are and what you're supposed to be doing.
because because you of you don't know and who you are. Yeah, you forced to you know move in ignorance. And what 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 do we find? The people with no vision, what they perish. Again, I'm gonna say this again: the people with no vision, they perish. The people, you know what I mean, with no vision, they perish. I mean, what is the what, what is the vision? You know what I mean? What what are we looking at? I see one scripture. Therefore, seeing that we have this ministry. Oh man, that's gonna go past y'all head. If our gospel be hid, it's only hidden to those that are lost. If this game be hid, it's only hidden to those that are lost. Man, I just uh, I. You know, it kind of reminded me what Free said. I can teach you 30 times and you still wouldn't know. You know, I done said so many things. And while I was saying it, all individuals kept saying, but he's a billionaire. He's a billionaire. <laughs> that's, that's big to you because of your status, because of your mind state. That's not big to the pimps. The fuck is a billionaire to a trillionaire? Fuck is a, a guy that, you know, is worth two billion to a guy that's worth 50 billion or 100 billion, 80 billion. Come on, man. And then what you have to realize is one thing about this pimping, and Prince know this, even without money. Oh, my God. Oh, you squares ain't going to be able to catch it, but the pimping will. You can take a pimp that's holeless and doleless, and he's more valuable than a renegade that got a million dollars. He still got more respect in the game than a renegade that got a million dollars, and he can be holeless and doleless at that time. And he's still going to be respected and acknowledged, and he broke right now, but he's still going to be you know what I mean? Acknowledged and respected as the pimping. And this renegade can have houses. She can have a car. She can have jewelry. She can have all of that going on. And she still won't be equivalent to the pimping. That's how Jewish people see their people in comparison to us. The so-called Jews, that's how they see us. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you can become a billionaire you still wouldn't be equal to the least of them. That's how they see you. They see you as a Gentile. They see you as the less than. They don't see you as their equivalent. Oh, my God. But that's going to go over their head. So all of this, he's a billionaire. He's a billionaire. And you're not understanding you know, you looking at the dividends. They looking at the inheritance that they got from God. Because all their life, they were taught that they were better than you. All their life, they were taught that they were number one. And you was just another one. You know. But this video done got too damn long, man. You know what I mean? I, I could just go on and on on this Kanye. Because there was so many things. That was said within the video. You know what I mean? It was so many things that were said, you know, within that video. And then let me just say this. They knew that Kanye was going to be a good hoe because most guys that's raised by their mother alone with no father and no men to really, you know, be an example to them. You know what I mean? You can just mold them. And see that. Let me say this. All of y'all get caught up in somebody's gift that you believe all the myths that come out their mouth. You so caught up in somebody's gift that you believe every myth that come out their mouth because somebody can sing or rap or produce or maybe they speak well like a, a Dr. Umar Johnson. You know, you just believe that they flawless. And I keep telling you, if you think somebody perfect, it's because you don't know them. If you think this person is a God, it's because you, if you think they God, equivalent to Yahweh, it's because you don't know them. It's because you don't know them. That's why. But, 
Yes, you know, uh, he didn't have the benefit of really having his father in his life and in his shows. Because if he had had those benefits of really spending some uh, time with his pops and getting laced by a man, you know, he wouldn't be doing a lot of the uh, Tanya Harden ass shit that he doing on the goddamn internet, you know what I mean, crying over this plastic ass bitch. You know, but hey, it is what it is, man. You know what I mean? It is what it is, man. I just had to, you know, anytime. And then I had to think about that. That just came to my head. He said his wife told him that the, that hat is small dick energy. Look at the way the bitch treat him. And you're going to tell me this ain't no hoe? And your wife tell you that you got small dick energy? Your wife telling you that, uh, what did she tell Kanye that he should get? Liposuction. Come on, man. Anytime where a bitch tell you that wearing that hat is small dick energy, and then she also told him at one time that he should get lipo, and you're going to tell me that this ain't no hoe? Man, stop playing. Stop playing. You think just because somebody got a billion green papers with dead hypocrites on it, you know what I mean, that that eradicate the irrefutable fact uh, that this motherfucker a hoe. Ain't no, ain't no, <laughs> ain't no, ain't, ain't no motherfucker, you understand me, that's governed by principle and governed by manhood gonna allow no bitch to sit up there and say, yeah, you, yeah, baby, you should just go on here and get lipo. She don't even respect him. Any woman that would even make a suggestion to you like that, she don't respect you. She don't even honor you. She don't see you as, now, of course, your fans see you one way. But your wife, the woman that live with you, of course, she going to see you as, a, you know, another. And it proves that. Because don't know woman, let me say this to you, young man. Don't know woman that honor you, respect you, you know, worship the ground that you walk on, say no shit like that to you. Baby, take off that hat. It's small dick energy. Like, <laughs> Oh, my God. You know? Yeah, she know all the... Is right, that's right. That's right, Denise. That's right. All the insecurities. You right. Should have, hold on. Let me see. All the insecure. Okay, I want to make sure. But, yeah, man. Kanye was letting y'all know. Don't send them hoes to shut me up. Because what do hoes do? You know what I mean? When a hoe get out of bounds and she talking to a pimp out of bounds on the track. Other hoes like, girl, you better stop talking to him. That's a pimp. <laughs> Prince, what, what them hoes say to another hoe? If a hoe, if a pimp came by right now driving the track. And a hoe looking dead at him and she being disrespectful. Sometime a hoe that got love for him be like, bitch, you better stop disrespecting pimping. Bitch, because if he get out that car and he do such and such, such and such, you know, bitch, that's a pimp. You know what I mean? Kanye, hold on now. When you got disrespectful, you know what I mean, with Keisha, uh, Keisha 304 or Strawberry underscore, you know what I mean, 304, it wasn't a problem. But, bitch, that's a pimp right there. Now you disrespecting pimping. You might fuck around and get killed. They might Whitney you. They might Michael you. They might Prince you. They might R. Kelly you, bitch. You don't, bitch. Yeah. Don't think that you done got so big that they can't sit up there and motherfucking uh, Whitney your motherfucking ass. Yeah. Ain't nobody that big. You wasn't you as big as you is. You not bigger than no goddamn Michael Jackson. Now, as far as financially, yes. Musically, hell no. Michael was bigger than big. But don't you ever think that you that big where they can't remind you, ho, that you a ho. Don't you ever think that you that big, nigga, that they can't remind you that you a nigga. Oh, but I'm a billionaire. Yeah, nigga, but you know what I mean? You still don't control nothing. You got some money, 
but we can show you that you really don't got the power that you've been deceived into thinking that you have. Your, your own people not even united with you. Your own people not even on one accord with you. So it don't matter that you got this money and all of that. Is, is your people on one accord with you? Do your people fuck with you like our people fuck with us? You see, our people fuck with us. You can't disrespect us without consequences coming. Your people disrespect each other, kill one another, and all of that shit. You know what I mean? Y'all not together. Y'all not united. You know? So, again, a person can, you know, seem to be, they can seem to be, you know, powerful because of the amount of money that they have. You know, but the truth of the matter is this, you know, uh, because of that emotional problem that he got, because of the personal demons that he fighting and all that type of shit like that, man, that money don't mean a goddamn thing. Come on, man, that nigga was a billionaire and he couldn't even tell you where his kid was at. But you want to tell me about all this goddamn power that he got when he on Instagram sitting over there crying to the world that, you know, he don't know where his child is. But you want to tell me about all of this power. You want to tell me about, you know, him being a, a, a billionaire and all of this goddamn shit. But he crying to you talking about something. They kidnapped his kid. You know what I mean? And Man, stop it. See, they letting that fire work off. Let me see. But yeah, man, I done talked enough shit. I done talked enough motherfucking shit, man. You know, I didn't ruffle y'all fe feathers up, you know, enough. I know y'all and y'all feelings about this shit, man, you know? But but if you really actually listen to what I'm saying and listen to this game, you're like, man, sin actually, sin actually was kicking this game. It was just going over my head because I'm not of the game. You know, that's all. Because you're not of the game, you know what I mean? It was hard for you to understand. But all right, man, uh, I'm not going to do too much. Do me a favor, though, man. Before we get out of here, I need for you to uh, click the thumbs up button. Get all them likes up. Of course, I'm going to put the uh, link to my Patreon in the uh, comment section after I end this video. I definitely want you to come over to the uh, Patreon. I got to get over here, out of here in a little bit because I know the people that love uh, Raising Canaan. They want to see the season finale, uh, season finale. So I got to post that, you know, but blessings to, uh, you know, what I mean, everybody. Hey, Lisa. Hey, gorgeous. You know, blessings to you, darling. Um, but yeah, do me a favor. Go ahead and get those likes up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, you know, we'd be talking about a lot of things that you guys probably wouldn't want to fuck with. So, you know, uh, if you don't want to listen to that type of content, then, then yeah, don't subscribe. But if you can fuck with some game, if you can listen to the game, you know, uh, straight with no chaser, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, click on this, uh, that subscribe and that bell button, you know? I know some of y'all thinking about that, that song now, the world is filled with pimps and hoes. Is you starting to see it on a bigger scale now, huh? Yeah, me and the individuals on my level, this is the small level. This is the minor league. Always remember that. You know what I mean? There's some dimensions. There's some, there's some leagues that's way bigger than this. Way bigger than this. And when you really get full of this game and your eyes become the vision of this game and you see things the way that it is, you will see pimping and hoeing in all forms. You will see pimping and hoeing, you know what I mean, in the White House, the church house, your house, his house. And they house, it's omnipresent. Remember that a spirit is an unseen reality that's manifested in matters that's seen. You know what I mean? So uh, the spirit of pimping and horn, it's omnipresent. You can't escape this shit. And nine out of ten, your favorite rapper is a hoe. But anyway, man, I hope y'all live as long as you want and never want as long as you live. I love you. And uh, hopefully, man, we fellowship, you know, at another time, man. I'm out of here. Gone.